Mr. Chairman, the meeting is live. Good evening, all. Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to the Monday, January 25th, 2021, Historic Preservation Commission meeting. I would like to call this meeting to order at 6.38 p.m. Secretary Henderson, can you please read the notice of compliance? The notice requirements provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given and published in the North Jersey Herald and News on August 7, 2020, and filed with the City Clerk of the City of Patterson on July 31st, 2020, and posted in the Patterson City Hall immediately thereafter. Thank you, Secretary. Can you please read the uh, roll call? Commissioner DeLise. Present. Commissioner Garcia Leon. Uh, Commissioner Garcia Leon is absent. Commissioner Ami. Absent. Fabulous. Commissioner Corbo. Present. Commissioner Redmond. Present. Commissioner Rafael. Present. Commissioner Simpson. Absent. Commissioner Walter. Present. Chair Tate. Present. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, I'd like to move to item three on our agenda, which is the approval of minutes for December 21st, 2020. Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we accept the minutes for uh, December. Second. Second. Okay, so I, I heard Commissioner Redmond for the motion, and can we repeat who was the second? <laughs> Both Karen and I responded, so either one. Okay, we'll, we'll go with uh, we'll, we'll go with Kelly for the second. Roll call, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Commissioner DeLise. Yes. Commissioner Corbo. Yes. Commissioner Redmond. Yes. Commissioner Rafael. Yes. Commissioner for Walter. Yes. Chair T. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, so at this time we'll jump along to uh, new business, which is item number seven. We'll begin with um, item A. Director, can you introduce um, 67 Market Street in the Great Falls Historic District? This is a planning review for a proposed mixed use. That was demolished in 2008. It will be presented by Matthew Evans Architects for JCM Holdings. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be happy to introduce the application. Let's put a photo on the screen first. Well, actually, let me show you the uh, site and application. Uh, our subject property for this application is in the Great Falls Historic District on Market Street. Uh, it is, let me blow this up a bit for everyone to see better. It is on Lower Market Street in the business district, uh, right adjacent to and next door to uh, the large lot, which is the, which uh, to the left here that you see, number 15, uh, which is the playground for school number two, which is this, these two large lots, numbers one and two, where my hand is pointing on the screen. Uh, you can see this is a very narrow lot, um, sit, kind of sandwich was stuck in between two larger lots uh, and again in the business district of uh, the Great Falls district so we're right out sort of on the border of the downtown commercial historic district at Chauncey Street uh, which sort of picks up uh, where the Great Falls district ends. I have a photo I'd like to show. It's not that one, it's this one here. Uh, this is 
that application, planning review, planning review application for a new building in the Great Falls is sort of interesting that suddenly uh, due to fires and other calamities, we are looking at several uh, you know, new buildings in the near future coming to the Great Falls Historic District for review. Uh, some of these new buildings will be on corner lots um, of just a block away. And, um, another building will be on, uh, on Mill Street in Elm. Uh, so these, uh, this is the first of, I think, several uh, reviews that we'll be looking at uh, coming up in the future this year for new buildings in the Great Falls Historic District. The subject property is this lot here that you see in the center of the screen behind the silver, silver car. It's uh, a vacant lot, as, as mentioned in, on the agenda. Uh, this uh, building was raised in 2008. I believe the circumstances of the uh, demolition was that the building was structurally unsound uh, and needed to be demolished. Uh, next door, you see this other lot, kind of a double wide lot associated with a business building that's just off screen. And to the left side, you see uh, the playground, the fence playground for school number two, and the and a large school number two behind it. So I wanted to give you an orientation of where the uh, building uh, siting is uh, in the Great Falls District. Uh, so with that said, I'd like to turn it over to um, our uh, presenter this evening, uh, architect Matthew Evans, who's presenting on behalf of the applicant, JCM Holdings. Um, Matt, are you on the line? Can you hear me? Matt, we can't hear you still. If it's any uh, help to you, if you're trying to, looks like he's going to try to log in again. Uh, so for, for everyone else uh, who's in the meeting right now, if this uh, situation happens during your presentation or even during the meeting, if you're a commissioner, you could try to log log out of the meeting or end the meeting with the, with the X at the bottom of the screen where you actually leave the meeting and then log into the meeting again. Uh, if that still doesn't work for you, you can also try to restart your PC uh, from the very beginning, have it reboot. Um, I know it takes time, but sometimes that's what's needed. In that case, um, he could hear us, but we couldn't hear him. So another thing to keep in mind is there's a way of being able to call in uh, to the meeting, and the call-in information is usually available uh, in one of the menu menu options. If you just start looking through it, uh, you can generally find the call-in information. You can also find the call-in information on your uh, invitation. It's there with all the information that you need. So. I, I don't see um, I don't see uh, architect Evans like joining back in again. Uh, I think John, I, I just so, told him to call in. Yeah, you should you should try to call in. Is what I was going to say.
I just spoke to Mr. Evans on the phone. He's uh, currently trying to call in, uh, dial in, and then I'll show the presentation on the screen. Confirm. Thank you. to be sworn in by our attorney, Mr. Uh, ben David? Yes. Okay. Mr. Evans, do you, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Good choice. Thank you very much. Uh, please uh, uh, present your, your application. Okay. Um, basically, uh, give me one second here. Um, what we're doing is, uh, John Franco said before, we're doing uh, new construction on the existing property. Uh, it's going to be a three-story mixed-use building, and we're having uh, commercial on the first floor, and we have um, residential in the rear of the first floor and also on the second and third floor. Um, we proposed it's all it's framed with a brick facade, and... Um, we have, um, give me one second, we have, uh, if you look at the site plan, the site plan shows uh, basically a 23 foot uh, wide property and we have 100 feet deep. So that uh, structure would be continuing with a previously uh, um, a demolished structure that would be um, following suit with that uh, type of construction. Uh, showing that, we will go to the, um, give me one second, going to the uh, sheet SK1, we show the foundation, first floor, second floor, and third floor plans. Uh, as I mentioned, it's commercial on the first floor. We have a two-bedroom unit in the rear. And on the second floor, we have a two-bedroom uh, in the front. And then we have a two-bedroom in the rear. Uh, and that would continue uh, to the third floor where we have two bedrooms and then we have a studio in the middle and then we have a uh, two bedroom in the rear. On the elevations, we show the uh, front elevation 
um, which is three stories. We have a brick facade, um, and we have a architectural cornice python uh, construction at the top of the building. We have uh, soldier course uh, lintels, and we have soldier course um, on the flat brick sills on the windows. We have double windows uh, for the second floor, third floor, and we also have um, large uh, Anderson double hung windows, which would be black finish, and those would be um, architectural grade, which would be suitable for uh, something that we've done previously in the historic uh, district. The storefront would uh, match the uh, lines of the upper floors. We have um, proposed storefront, and then we have a storefront door for the apartment entry also. The, as I mentioned, the front would be um, brick facade. Showing the rear elevation, we would have party plank horizontal siding. Uh, we have the double hung windows also, and it's more of a plain uh, exterior with a door to the rear yard. Going to the uh, left side, which is um, basically the window well side of the uh, property, we show um, the the hardy plank. We've also added a freeze panel to the um, the left facade because it is going to be so exposed by the open uh, playground and the school property. We want to give it a little more architectural character. And then we've also added a brick veneer. Um, uh, course five, four feet, the four feet along the first section of that uh, um, elevation. So uh, you can see the brick on the um, corner of, of of the front. Also the uh, architectural cornice. So those um, basically are the um, the elevations um, that we're proposing and. Um, I guess I would, if there's any questions, I could answer those. Thank you, uh, Matthew. Does that conclude your presentation? Yes. Okay. Um, at this time, I'd like to open this up to our commissioners for any questions towards the uh, to the applicant regarding what you just saw on the screen. Uh, please raise your hand, and the executive director will call on you accordingly. This is Rich. I have a question. I'm having a little trouble finding the spot on my screen to raise my hand. <laughs> Go ahead, Rich. All right. I'm, I'm uh, a little concerned about the school side uh, of, of it. Uh, have you taken you have those windows there? You can take it into consideration that those kids are in you know, a playground right there, and the playground is going to be breaking windows? And there's a fence there. Is that the school's fence? Is that going to remain? Or is that uh, going to be removed? Uh, I believe it's the school's uh, playground fence. Um, that would not be part on, on our property. Um, you can see um, on the site plan, let me look at the site plan. There's the wall and the fence, which is... Um, clear of our property. So we have like a little area way between the, the fence and our property. Even though our property is only 23 feet wide, there's a, a small walkway between the fence and the building. So um, our building construction would not affect that fence. Okay, but there's also one area we talking about window breakage there. That's a playground. Well, we didn't really um, think it would be an issue. I don't. I don't think it would be an issue as far as uh, uh, the playground. But hey, I just, I just thought that you know, I noticed that and I thought I just warned you about that because those windows will get broken if they play ball out there. Matthew, any other questions, commissioners? Yeah, this is uh, Chair Tate. I just have a quick question for the applicant. Uh, considering this new 
were there any uh, solar studies about what, what type of shadow would be cast on the playground? No, we, we didn't do any solar studies, but basically this building would be same height and massing of the previous structure that was removed uh, on the um, on the site. So I don't believe the other building had a negative impact on it, um, but I, I don't think it would be, uh, as I said, negatively impact the site adjacent. Thank you. Uh, Executive Director, do we see any more questions? Uh, no, uh, no, no one else has uh, indicated that they have questions. Okay, so uh, at this time, uh, I'd like to uh, open this up to the public. Uh, uh, Tim, could you could you read the information for the public to call in to ask the architect questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Those who would like to participate in the public two one one five seven nine and enter meeting ID seven one one six eight zero 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 one. Again, may call in at nine seven three three two one one five seven nine and enter meeting ID seven one one six eight zero 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 one. Seven o'clock. We'll leave the call line open till seven o three. Thank you.
Okay, it's uh, 703. Executive Director, can you confirm if we have any callers from IT? There are no qualities, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask our uh, um, secretary to read the prepared uh, notice of resolution for this project. It's the resolution statement of purpose. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Resolution number 20-22. Two, directs the Executive Director of the Historic Preservation Commission to prepare a memorandum containing the Commission's recommendations to the Planning Board and or the Board of Adjustment regarding the property located at 67 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey, Block 4608, Block 14, situated within the designated Great Falls Historic District. Thank you very much. Commissioners, can we get a motion and second for this resolution? All motion. Okay. All second, Joyce. All right. So Tim, we have uh, we have Commissioner Ruppel for the motion, and then we have Commissioner Corbo for the second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. So now uh, that the resolution is on the floor, the uh, floor is open for discussion amongst the commissioners. Do you want the uh, uh, report from the uh, committee first? Uh, we, we could read the report from the committee uh, if that makes, you know, we can do that. Executive Director, could you, is that, is that uh, Vice Chair Ruffell? Yes, I was just going to say that would make sense. Um, so then we have discussion points with those who are not part of the committee. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so we um, we prepared, we, we met last Thursday and we prepared a, a committee report for this particular project and uh, we'll read it accordingly. Okay. So regarding the architectural proportionality for, uh, and we're, we're looking at 67 Market Street, Block 4608, Block 14 in the Great Falls Historic District. Regarding architectural proportionality, the Design Review Committee does recommend the approval of the proposed architectural proportion of the, the revised front facade or elevation. The, uh, the left edge of the storefront's aluminum safety glass opening was modified to fall within the line of the residential windows above for visual harmony. The glass opening mirrored to the right of the commercial entry door reflects this recommended change. Regarding the proposed siting, the Design Review Committee does not recommend the approval of the proposed Hardy, board, uh, Hardy Plank siting in the, in the Great Falls Historic District by the applicant. The Design Review Committee does recommend brick per latest elevations, which reflect the modification of previously proposed materials in earlier iterations. With regards to the windows, the committee recommends the installation of the proposed window types and specifications. The, uh, the committee recommends the installation of the proposed fiber uh, fiberglass composite exterior with wood interior by Anderson proposed by the architect. As per code, there are no windows allowed on the firewall, which is uh, when the wall is on the lot line. Therefore, the building does not have windows on both sides, as you can see from the presentation. Uh, the architect applicant shall provide color specifications and qualities for internal review by the HPC director, Gianfranco Archimede, and staff for confirmed materiality as required. Regarding the commercial uh, storefront signage, the design review committee recommends a flat sign as indicated on the drawings per historic preservation guidelines as opposed to the installation of an awning. This note is only indicated for record. Uh, furthermore, Design Review Committee recommends the architect consider sign board approach as per the Great Fall Historic District guidelines and indicating on the drawings. Regarding exterior rolling gate, 
the design review committee recommends no exterior rolling gates. Uh, the architect shall uh, consider internal rolling gates for security components to be installed and housed inside of the storefront as required. And the last item is paint. All exterior proposed paint colors, specifications, and qualities shall be internally reviewed by the HPC director, Gianfranco Archimedes, and staff for confirmed materiality, materiality as required. With that said, I'd like to uh, open up the floor for uh, comments on our uh, uh, review. Mitch Walter. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I, it said the brick on the side as in the uh, diagrams, but I think the entire side, especially the school side, should be brick. That's going to be very visible from the street. And I don't think hardy board, even on the top, is uh, suitable. I, I agree with, I missed this part of the design review committee for this application, but I agree with what uh, was presented by that committee. My only question, I guess, for the committee members and for the commission is the consideration for the windows, uh, so currently they are proposed as double hung. Um, given that it is in the Great Falls Historic District and many of the windows have variations from, you know, six over six or, you know, et cetera, um, was there any discussion about sort of the styling of the window, you know, six over one, six over six? Uh, might I interject? So we, so we were we were discussing the sort of broad brush strokes, and we, we wanted to leave the window discussion open for tonight's meeting to solidify the design review uh, report before it's issued to the applicant. And uh, your recommendation for sort of uh, scaling the windows with uh, divided lights is appropriate, especially per our design guidelines and some of the buildings in that particular area. So I would recommend that we, you know, we look at uh, perhaps a, uh, uh, you know, a six over six, or, or I'm sorry, six over one type of situation for these proposed double hungs on the residential levels. I'd just like to interject here. Uh, this has been a pretty thorough review for a rather straightforward and simple new building, and so I appreciate uh, everyone's comments. Uh, however, a reminder that this is a planning review, and this level of detail is really, um, you know, more for the design review, uh, which comes after the planning board has approved the application. But for now, as you recall from the statement of purpose of the resolution, I do need to, everyone to remember that, um, Concurring with the resolution that's on the table um, allows uh, me to write to the planning board, uh, letting them know uh, what you think of this building. Um, in that when when you vote on this uh, resolution, that it, it shows your concurrence uh, that the building is supported uh, for for construction purposes. We do review some of the materiality for the reasons that, that everyone is discussing right now and for the applicant also to get a sense of um, what is being uh, requested and what the guidelines call for. With uh, you know new buildings, some of the materiality is important for um, consistency with the streetscape. It's just a, a very a, a unique situation because the building has no neighbor uh, right now, uh, and the playground for school number two is likely to remain a playground for many, many years to come. Um, but the party wall along the, the lot uh, to the right side of the facade uh, is also vacant, uh, and it's not a separate lot. Uh, it's one lot with a building and sort of this extra space on the side, so there, it's likely that there may not be another building built there, so it'll be sort of a standalone building in that regard. So on this, on this, uh, in this position, uh, it is sort of standing by itself, so we need to keep that in mind um, as a new building as well in terms of the materiality of it. Okay. 
So we do have commitments shown on the on the planning uh, application that uh, Mr. Evans reviewed with us for uh, architecturally correct windows, whether they're one over or one over one or six over one, can be determined probably later in the design review. Um, the fill and windfall details, the uh, cornice, the freeze panel on the side. Um, one of the one of the biggest. Uh, kind of differences right now is the discussion about which I think would have um, <clears throat> have some implications to both the commissioners and to the uh, applicants right now would be this entire wall. Uh, hardy plank siding is uh, a material that we, we uh, accept in, in, in many applications in the past. We have considered it to be an appropriate and high quality uh, uh, vertical si uh, horizontal signing replacement. Um, and that's what's being proposed here. But what I'm hearing is that uh, two commissioners have said that this side should be all brick uh, as opposed to just this side. Can we have more discussion about that and then maybe move on to um, get that getting down to um, uh, uh, closing the discussion since um, I think most of this can, all the rest of this can be covered in the design review. Confirmed. Uh, may I interject? Um, while we're looking at this side elevation, um, would it be possible as a, I stand by the no siding in the Great Falls Historic District, but if we were to consider an alternate version of this elevation, what would the possibility be to bring the brick up at least to the first floor level and make that a band that wraps along that wall, that entire wall? And then the hardy board would happen directly above that floor line. And then I wanted to open that to the commissioners to see what their thoughts are. Because that at least breaks the scale down from the commercial and the residential. I, this is Rich, I'd love to see the whole world, but that would be a compromise that I would accept. Commissioner Raffaele, you have anything? No, I was going to, um, I mean, if you look at the district as a whole, um, I mean, you know, now obviously siding, but um, older buildings within the district did have some type of wood siding, so I mean, I, I would second, you know, Rich's suggestion and your suggestion, Will, either a compromise of mixed material or um, a wood siding that would be consistent with the nearby Dublin and the remaining older buildings in the district. Thank you, Kelly. Commissioner Redmond. Commissioner Redmond. Yeah, yes, I totally agree with, with the second option is with the, the compromise um, siding. I will be um, in favor of that if we cannot do the whole break set instead. But I'll be, I'll be in favor of the second suggestion. Thank you. So, so Executive Director, with that said, and, and since we're not talking about materiality at this point, the the banding of the the commercial level of brick is something that I think we're all in favor of. Uh, is that something that we can re, I guess revise in our in our design review committee report before we issue it to the applicant? Well, yes. Uh, for for right now, we're not voting on a conditional approval for design review. It's for a planning review. So, in general, these are these are discussion comments that are to the benefit of the ar of, to the architect and to the applicant as to what the design review will go. But I, I believe, um, uh, you know, and, and let me just put it this way: uh, it's important that I know uh, that the commission is in favor of uh, this building being constructed, so that I can. Um, uh, write that accordingly uh, to the planning board. So unless there are objections, or if you do object for whatever reason, uh, then you just need to vote no on this. But otherwise, that, that's what the summation of the comments will be. And I'll also summarize the materiality, you know, can be adjusted in design review. Uh, and that the how I would write it. 
I think captures the essence of what the discussion is tonight. Confirmed. Are there any additional questions on the floor? No questions. Okay. Um, can we get a, a motion to approve the resolution with the conditions uh, stated here within? Mr. Chairman, I believe we have a motion on the floor. At this point, we just need a roll call. Tim, please uh, provide the roll call for the, for the resolution. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Delise. Yes. Commissioner Orgo. Yes. Commissioner Redman. Yes. Commissioner Rafael. Yes. Commissioner Walter. Well, being that uh, this is only a plenary review, and I do like the mass and the size of the building and such, I'm going to vote yes, as well as it comes back for us again. Understood. Thank you, Commissioner Walter. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So with that being said, we will move on to item B of uh, new business, which is 101-117 uh, Washington Street. This is for 112-126 Van Houten Street in the downtown uh, uh, historic district. Uh, the design review for the redevelopment project to include the rehabilitation of three Washington Street buildings, demolition of three Van Houten Street buildings, and a construction of six story, a six story mixed use building on the house. Architects for 103 Washington uh, LLC. Um, Director, do you have a uh, presentation to introduce this project? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to introduce the project. Thank you very much. I'm going to switch over to uh, the uh, screen and sort of delete. Uh, take out this and change over to our next um, application. Just bear with me a moment. Okay, bear with me, I'm getting there. Yes, we uh, saw this planning review for this redevelopment project uh, in November of last year, and I hope that everyone will remember it. This is a, an, an incredible project uh, being brought to um, us in November for the redevelopment of uh, three historic buildings of Washington Street and turning around the corner onto Van Houten um, for the you know erection of a new building in uh, the downtown commercial historic district. Uh, as I mentioned during the planning review in the introduction uh, in November, we uh, have not seen a large new building constructed in downtown commercial district in many many years. Um, in fact, unless um, anyone can say otherwise, I believe the last large building was the tallest building in the downtown district uh, known as Hamilton Square. Um, that is about, I think it's 10 or 11 stories uh, tall. Uh, so we are you know, very pleased to see this ambitious project that will restore the uh, entire streetscape of Washington Street uh, from the corner of Ellison. If you all remember the uh, the um, uh, police station project that we just finished. Of course, the first building is 125 Ellison, which 
Kids Bank building owned by the city. Right next door to that is the police station that was rehabilitated and completed last year. And then the buildings uh, after the police station um, to the end of the block uh, are the three buildings we'll be considering tonight. Around the corner, there are two warehouse buildings that were approved for demolition, and there is a like a lot or park what's now a parking lot next to those two buildings. The new uh, mass of the larger building will go in the two lots in the space where the warehouse uh, demolition occurs. Uh, so I'm showing you right now just the planning review um, uh, letter that was put forward to the um, planning board. Um, when uh, they went ahead and did the, the approval of, of this application. And one of the major uh, elements that we uh, recommended to the planning board as part of the review was the maintenance of um, the firehouse facade, the small firehouse building that uh, we explained in this letter is significant, and uh, we did so at the, uh, the, the presentation as well. Um, we ask the uh, applicants to please consider maintaining the facade of the um, of the firehouse uh, because we knew that the corner of the new building would be uh, either incorporating that, that space where the firehouse is, um, and that is something I think we'll hear more about tonight with regard to how the firehouse facade is being integrated into the larger uh, new building. So uh, you can see again here, I'm just sort of showing everyone the uh, review that we did and the comments that we made um, to you know, note to you that uh, we supported this application in November and we expected the design uh, review to uh, come back to us to show us tonight the treatments of the three buildings in great detail. Um, and this is really uh, the important part of what um, will get this project started as they get into developing their plans to a point of you know, requesting permits. So they're going to need this import, this um, this um, um, input from us uh, in this design review. So you can see the comments that were made. I'll just uh, uh, sort of want to take a moment here that we supported the rehabilitation of the three architecturally historic, uh, significant, historically significant buildings and um, the proposed new six-story residential commercial mixed-use structure, the demolition of the two warehouse uh, buildings. And this, of course, is coming for the proposal to demolish the, um, the engine company or the firehouse. So this is, um, this is sort of where I would like to uh, leave off and thank the applicants for uh, coming back for design review. We have several folks on the uh, call tonight listening in. If there are questions that they can answer, they can uh, be sworn in at that time, but uh, they've already indicated that um, they'd like the presentation to be made by their uh, professional architect consultants from GR, uh, DRG, uh, Mr. Victor Rodriguez, who's joining us. Uh, that concludes my presentation, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director. Um, at this point, I'd like uh, Mr. Victor Rodriguez to be sworn in. Mr. Victor Rodriguez? Yes, I'm here. Can you come forward to be sworn in by our legal attorney, um, Mr. Ben David? Yes. Thank you. All right, you swear firm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. So let's proceed. Thank you, Victor. Please, Mr. Rodriguez. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you control of the screen so you can put your presentation up. But first, I need to stop sharing my screen, and then it'll, uh, if you don't mind using the button at the bottom to share your screen, okay? Okay. I'm doing that now. All right. Go ahead, please. Give me a second to bring the uh, doors up. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Can you see the uh, screen? It's coming, almost. Okay. Can you see the images? Not yet. Not yet. Now, um, there is a... At the top of your screen that you want to share, there's a little tab that says share or, or uh, stop sharing. Just make sure that uh, the green is on for share on that. Uh, because right now we see a great screen, which I think means that um, we're not seeing the one that you want us to see. Right. And, um, okay. You have control, but we just, you have control of everything. We just don't see the one that you want to show us right now. Yeah, there right it is. Now. Just come up on my side. I see yeah. it now on my side. You see it now? Yes. I don't know anyone, that um... Okay. All right. Go so, ahead, please. So everybody can see it. Great. Um... I have um, this uh, image uh, shows the location of the sites. Uh, the, the three buildings fronting Washington Street, uh, that 22, 23, and 1, 107, 105, and, and building 103. Uh, these buildings are historic and will, um, they're being renovated to uh, um, be a mixed use. Uh, renovation with uh, retail and residential apartment units um, going towards by Houghton Street building one fronts by Houghton Street plus building two which is planned to be you know the partially you know the mileage actually entirely but the front in you know, a facade four and four are to be buildings that are existing and they will be demolished. Uh, lot five and six is a parking lot. Now, down below, you know, you can see the different images of the existing buildings. Later, I will show in greater, you know, detail uh, what, um, you know, what we intend, you know, to do. Um, moving forward to the next slide. Uh, this is the building. Uh, the 22107 Washington Street. This building is a existing limestone uh, facade that apparently has not been painted over yet. Maybe you know partially, but we can't you know confirm you know right um, on the top. There's some um, seems to be some uh, repair that has been done right on the upper right hand side. Uh, the facade uh, is, is in uh, good you know, condition for such a building uh, built in 1915. Um, they are, uh, the was, uh, you know has been closed up. There are AC units on the windows that, of course, you know, they already, you know, you know, removed. So there's some, um, you know, repairs that will, that will be recommended, but the limestone, you know, facade, including, you know, the joints are fairly, you know, good shape. Then we move into the, the 23, uh, showing pink on the upper right hand side, and this is a, the center uh, building in between. The entire you know, facade has been painted over, hardly many times over. So it's not the original. Back from 1910, uh, it, uh, we have the images uh, that show that you know some of the of the paint has started you know to peel just a little bit up on the top. Uh, I'm not sure when the building was painted last, but it's definitely all painted. Uh, there's an existing. This used to be well, actually you know the three buildings. They were the the old uh, you know Greenbaum you know furniture stores, and um, there is a. A sign, you know, that read um, uh, uh, extended, um, you know, um, uh, signage um, uh, extending that is existing, and, and we intend to to remove it. And depending on the tenant that will be coming into the building, there may be one apply. But at this point, you know, we don't know. That, uh, right, or, you know, right at this point, uh, as we move forward, we will show you, you know, what we intend to do. There's existing retail stores down below, 
So actually, in not in great shape. They are some, some of them may have some historical values, but generally they do not. The only thing that we can see is that it's around, I'm, what I'm pointing with my um, uh, mouse here, it's around, uh, uh, you know, basically in here. But other than that, everything is in, um, there's a mixture of different uh, storefronts. Going to the uh, line one, one or three, Washington Street, which is also fronting Manhattan Street, there's a facade that has been painted apparently many times over already. Uh, there's own uh, uh, storefronts that are in old wood. Some of the wood is being is rotted right, you know, by the sidewalk. All of that, you know, everything seems to be in in fairly good uh, shape. The upper corners of the top is 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 actually in shape. In fact, uh, you know the corners in all the buildings are in, in great shape. And particularly, you know this room here. This room, uh, I, I believe, is a historical one that has never been touched or painted. Um, this is a brick, you know, building. Uh, it's probably you know one of the uh, earlier you know buildings dating back from 1860, I think, and rebuilt in 1902. Um, then we're going to the uh, La Tour, 112 Manhattan Street, which is in pink, as you can see in the upper um, uh, right hand side. Uh, it's going to be acknowledged, except as, uh, as it was uh, discussed earlier, the facade is to remain. We have already um, uh, you know, designed ways of, of supporting you know, the facade and, and uh, um, uh, I'm going to tell you that the lower part is, is been painted. It, it, you know, it has been painted over um, a number of times. It seems that above that, the the original you know limestone is, is still um, uh, there and and hasn't been painted. Uh, it, everything seems to be in fairly you know good shape above that. The existing two windows above that, which they were pointed as being historical, they are to remain and will you know remain. Uh, except on the lower parts, as you can see, um, we are uh, providing gates, which I will show you, you know, later on. Uh, moving forward to the uh, last, are going to be, you know, the two buildings that are going to be, you know, the knowledge. This is actually how, you know, they look at uh, now, and we already, you know, reviewed that earlier, and and uh, you know, it was approved that uh, they will be, you know, the knowledge. You know, there's no historical, you know, value in those buildings. This is the lot. Uh, I think it's lot. Uh, uh, four, and this is a, you know another you know warehouse that will be you know the knowledge, and then uh, next to that you know there's a parking lot. Um, this image shows uh, the existing context you know surrounding the the area, and particularly in front of the building. Um, two, there's a parking you know garage in in um, in um, as you can see on the upper right hand side, I'm trying to remove this uh, oh yeah, here we go. Um, uh, view D, there's a parking uh garage of metal and, and, and seems to be you know some glaze uh, brick. Uh, in view B there's a historical you know building across and um, and then you know there's a church right uh, in the corner. But uh, other than that, this seems to be a historical, you know, buildings dating back, um, um, you, know, to, you know, for some time, and then there are newer, you know, buildings. There's a mixed uh, aesthetic, uh, you know, happening in the area. Uh, this is the proposed uh, uh, plans. Um, um, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, the existing building will be one of the buildings is, you uh, know, one of those. 113, I think it is. It is a two-story existing building, and then the middle building of the uh, fronting uh, Washington Street is in a two-story building plus the um, the building right uh, in the corner. Uh, so this building is going to be it is going to be converted to a mixed-use uh, retail and residential, uh, partially in the first floor and in the second and third floors. The there is a an alleyway in between that you know respects co um, uh, issues. So, so it, it, it is, which is going to be used as a service you know, for garbage. It was also a, a accident. The exist the new building, which you will be explaining later too, it is also a mixed use 
primarily has you know retail and uh, an entry from the Manhattan Street and and parking plus a common area a yard you know to be used uh, uh, you know for the residents with um, an additional five residential stories above that. On the roof, there's a common area too for, uh, um, you know, a common deck, like a roof garden. So this is a proposed um, uh, plans, and this is just, you know, for the new building, I mean, if, if, if additional slide with the roof, uh, you know, many this deck that, that is on half. This shows the elevation of the new building, um, with the transition of the, of the facade that is to remain. Um, we have developed that in greater you know, detail because we have, you know, construction, you know, drones already, which I will show you, you know, later on. This is just like a preview, you know, so you can see. These are renderings of, of, of the entire project uh, showing the existing uh, building. And then the, the facade will be of the 20-foot uh, 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 building that is historical, and that's going to be supported by, by structural and columns you know, behind. And at this point is where the, the existing uh, transitions into a newer you know, building. So there's a relationship in between you know, the two. So you can see this is you know, a massive building. And this is a view from the Hatton Street showing the the existing uh, you know, facade how it's going to be incorporated and blend into a design that um, that it, it respects the the existing, but but again it, it makes the, the the impact of of, of, of mixing into a new um, aesthetic. Uh, the facade of the building, uh, it, it, you know, it will be part of the. Uh, of downtown is uh, aesthetically, you know, pleasing the building, made out of uh, uh, brick, you know, veneer, and actually, uh, you know, two colors of brick, you know, veneer, there's a darker brick and then a, a lighter brick that is closer um, to the existing limestone um, buff uh, color. So we make an effort to, uh, you know, relate to the existing. And this is a, another view from the, uh, uh, you know, what happens to, you know, looking the opposite way. And this is more it's a close up of the of the existing you know, facade to remain and, and how you know, the two are transitioning. So it looks like there is a continuation of the of the old, if you will, with a modern take on the on the new uh, old building and then um, uh, in old brick. And this is another view. Uh, so this would be a very you know dynamic and vibrant uh, addition to the um, you know to what happens street. Um, next, uh, because we already move forward with the construction documents that are already uh, uh, out to, you know, for parenting, uh, this is uh, uh, showing now what we have in terms of documentation to restore or to improve the, the facade of, uh, you know, Washington Street. Um, the drawing, uh, which I, I can enlarge, it shows, um, I, I'm not sure if I can go in and, and have, you know, that And it's, you know, for the facade, and it tells what is going to be, you know, removed. For instance, the, the air conditioning, you know, you know, the windows will be removed. The, the boarded up uh, entry is going to be removed, provided, you know, with a new thing that is proposed to be, you know, removed. Um, no stones, no, no facade, you know, will be, you know, removed at all. Everything will be, you know, respected. The only things that are, are going to be, um, 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 you know, remove, uh, excuse me, added will be, of course, you know, a storefront on the main entry of this building and in, in the replacement of this uh, um, um, uh, doors and, and, and transom, you know, with a new, you know, framing. Um, so as you can see, everything is pretty much, uh, um, you know, respected. We just, you know, removing it. This is uh, the one that shows you in more detail what we could do to uh, repair the uh, existing you know, facades um, of the building, especially, you know, this is the one at the corner, uh, fronting uh, partially at the corner of uh, Washington Street and by Houghton Street. And the, the storefront has a little bit of wood, and 
Um, you know, we never really even discussed whether this was a historical uh, item on the building. Uh, the client has not uh, yet found a, um, a tenant, so it's standing on what type of storefront are we going to be um, incorporating in the future here. But right now, we are uh, proposing to um, to um, paint and repair the, you know, the facade, and these are you know, recommendations that are more finer you know, detail shown in on our drawings and, uh, and moving forward to um, to the building, you know, we're showing uh, what, what for instance, you know, going back, well, when I go back on the slide, you know, right now, the existing, all of the existing windows, most of the system windows are being you know, replaced with aluminum, um, uh, analyzed black aluminum. They're not existing, they're not the authentic or um, you know, historical windows. The only historical windows that exist are the the um, may perhaps you know these are older you know windows but they're not in, in good shape and I, I, I you know we believe that there's no historical you know value of that because you know let, later on um, so this is the retail you know, your facade there are things to be you know refurbished or, or you know renovated but nothing is in great shape here there's no historical you know value uh down at the existing you know you know retail that we can see uh this is a a, um, a documented uh uh you know construction you no know, drawings of the demolition of the facade and it, it tells you uh here what where are we going to be, you know, removing, you know, windows that are going to be, you know, removing or replaced. Um, and we move forward here, then we have a drawing that actually tells us what, um, you know, what are we doing, uh, providing, you know, new windows, we are uh, keeping um, the existing, you know, windows. Many of those windows are actually in, not a group, uh, especially, especially up here, they're not in great shape, they actually, uh, uh, they seem to be older windows, but they're not in, in great shape at all. They're, they're kind of broken down. Uh, they are with newer windows to match what is already there, which are uh, aluminum insulated, uh, aluminum you know, glaze windows with uh, black analyzed um, um, uh, uh, you know, finish. Uh, this is a plan of the existing building, indicating that the entry will be right in this building with a lobby. And, uh, you know, part of what we're doing, you know, the lobby to complement the, you know, the neighborhood in, in the interior. Uh, I know that we're talking about exterior, but I just want to point out that we're making an effort to, um, to bring large images, uh, indicating uh, images of the old uh, neighborhood, for instance, in that particular, you know, part of the, of the, um, uh, of the project. But all of that is retail. And, and residential in the upper floors. And you know, we, do have a, we do have a third floor. Um, this is a, a structural drawing, a structural engineering drawing indicating on the, um, on the left hand side where I'm pointing here, this is the bracing where it indicates the supports for the facade you know, that we're proposing to uh, keep. So further details as you can see, you know, the facade is being supported by columns and beams and, and, and footings. So all, all of this has been engineered already and, you know, it has been already uh, proved that, uh, you know, showing that the facade will be, you know, preserved. Um, we do have a drone here because I was asked to uh, uh, bring one that uh, shows uh, the proposed, you know, windows. A lot of them are double hung. In fact, all the windows on the facade are double hung, you know, windows. We are going to be, uh, whatever windows are going to match, um, you know, what was there um, uh, now. You know, what's there now. Um, we do have windows on the rear and what is on the ceiling, and they are going to be, you know, double hung too. And then we have a finish. And, um, for instance, the front entry where we enter, you know, from the storefront, you enter, this is going to be a, a, a um, storefront, and it will be um, a dark or a, a dark finish to mimic, you know, what was there because it was uh, probably the original may have been bronze, so, so we are uh, making the assumption that. On the side doors, you know, that was, uh, uh, you know, the existing is a bronze, but 
but it's being you know, removed and replaced with an aluminum uh, frame um, a bronze uh, finish. Uh, moving forward to the proposed new building, this is a, again, this is a, a construction document. It's a separate project in its own way because it's, it's detached, you know, for the existing. The existing and the new are not, you know, connected. Um, so this this uh, project has um, uh, roughly 135 apartment units, uh, retail in the first floor. The main entry is located here with elevators, and then we have parking, accessible parking with uh, in residential. And this is, you know, the facade in in construction documents. Here is show the facade, you know, to remain. And then we have the six-story, you know, building uh, with, with the amenities deck above. Um, you know, the building has, you know, setbacks in the front, as you, as you saw in the renderings. It respects, you know, the scale of the, of the um, neighborhood and the and the context, which uh, it takes a lot of the large, you know, windows for some of the, some of the historical uh, buildings. This is a technical drawing, but the reason I'm showing this is that um, this is a transition of the actual construction will be um, pointing out to uh, North Fazar, um Elevation five, but this is a wall section, and it shows that the existing you know, facade that to remain with how the transitions uh, with the proposed. Um, this is my conclusion of the presentation, um, and um, if you're free to ask me anything or um, you know clarify. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, we appreciate your presentation. At this moment, I'd like to open up the floor to the commissioners to ask any questions regarding the testimony from the applicant. Uh, please raise your hand, and uh, the executive director will call upon you accordingly. Thank you very much. Commissioner Walter? Yes. I was just wondering, are any of the facades going to be painted or repainted or touched up, or what's happening? With the facades on those buildings. Yes. Yeah, so the the existing um, there's two buildings fronting uh, Washington Street that are they have been painted, or and the plan is to repaint them because it, it's just um, it may not be you know feasible to actually scrap off the, the, the you know the paint. It's basically you know to repaint in a with a. Um, uh, a finish that would um, that would remain, um, you know, for a long period of time. One of the buildings has a, a limestone, uh, and it apparently it has never been painted. And that particular building, where the proposed entry to the apartment building uh, apartments uh, located, that one would be uh, sandblasted, uh, you know, and clean, uh, uh, and in uh, you know whatever joints of that. Uh, uh, it, you know, anything has been damaged to you to the side and the idea is to uh, come in and, and repoint, uh, you know, a joint or two, but basically all the joints in the limestone, you know, facade is in fairly, you know, good shape in that building. The the other building where uh, the, the facade fronting the Hatton Street is to remain, uh, uh, we're holding it, uh, you know, with a particular um, a facade is painted in, in the first floor and then the existing room will be treated equally with the put in, um, in Washington Street. But um, the that particular building is gate, gate, I wrote it on gate, which um, I believe I have it here and maybe, you know, I went too fast, but I haven't shown it to you. I can click it and show you how it will look. But that's the, the, the you know, the main tech, um, basically to take what is there now and to um, um, uh, do the equivalent of whatever is there now. Okay, uh, so you can uh, have John, if, you, if you're going to paint the building anyway, uh, you can have John Franco review the colors because uh, there's some questions about what colors the building should be. Sure, yes. Uh, I have a question for you. This is Chair Tate. So on your uh, proposal for, I believe it's building uh, 105, 
which is the the uh, the building with the paint over the existing terracotta. I'm, I'm sorry, building 107, the one that's adjacent to it. On the upper level, currently there appears to be steel and glass uh, windows with divided lights, and those will be um, replaced. Do you have a plan to replace those with um, existing in kind or, or reglazing the, the steel? And um, can, you, can you talk a little bit more about that, please? Thank you. Sure. sure. So this is, uh, I, I believe that you're talking about are the, um, the, the limestone building, um, which is still intact, uh, facing Washington Street. Correct. Yeah. Large. Yeah. So the... Starting with the lower level, the storefront will be brand new because uh, you know there's nothing there now. It, it was you know removal at some point, so that that one will be um, uh, a very nice um, um, small uh, scale uh, framing, and it will have a a, a bronze analyzed finish. Above that, the the windows will be replaced with. Uh, an aluminum frame window, uh, but we don't see the value of keeping those windows because um, apparently they are uninsulated. They don't um, apparently that they wouldn't feel you know windows you know that came in at some point. Uh, we can discuss that you know later with you know John Franco and see um, you, you know uh, you know in more detail what. Um, what um, what we could do there, but right now the intent is to replace them with something that's aesthetically uh, uh, pleasing and uh, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, frame window. Yes. Uh, thank you. And, and that aluminum frame window. Did you explore any options or iterations that include sort of replacing the divisions in kind? Yes. The, the, that is the intent. If, uh, for some reason, we yes, that is the intent. The intent oh. it will be that, and yes. Okay, thank you. Because I I saw on the elevations they appear to uh, simply be uh, solid, you know, fixed fixed uh, pane. But uh, that clarifies my question. Thank you very much. Uh, Director, do we see any other hands or questions? Uh, no, uh, no one, no one looks like they will have further questions. Um, I have a question I'd like to ask. On the same building that we were just discussing, the limestone building, uh, on the, on the new storefront installation, uh, currently there's, on either side of the storefront are two openings, uh, that are existing. A doorway, an entrance, and the other one also looks like it was an entrance historically. Uh, when we look at photos, uh, it looks like you're prescribing to remove uh, both of those entrances and install um, glazing. Uh, could you clarify what the treatment of those two uh, openings are, please? Sure. So, right now, as you can see, there's uh, actually a bronze uh, frame uh, door there, and on the on the opposite side is boarded up, so we can't set, uh, see anything. But we are, uh, will assume that it's the same thing. Right now, um, is to because we do not have a door there. Uh, uh, it's not planned to have a door. I, um, I you know, I, uh, perhaps you know, there was another town at some point. You know, they can later and install a door there. Uh, is to have uh, the a similar storefront comparable to the uh, main entry uh, storefront you know that we're providing with doors and that will be the same style of framing so it, it will complement you know the main entry it will be the same type of uh, bronze you know analyze it won't be real bronze but it will be you know uh, it could be a medium bronze dark bronze or light bronze you know we can choose you know with you uh, you know right now we're going with a medium bronze uh, or, or the dark bronze but it will be you know something that will complement you know the size and uh, so that's what we that's what we that's what we're showing now in our documents 
And in follow-up to that, uh, I think you mentioned in your presentation that, as we all see in the current condition, there is no storefront there. But we we know that historically that was the main entrance to the building. Uh, did you say that it would re would remain as as it is until you have a tenant? Uh, that would then put the storefront in at that time. I understand we can actually approve the storefront uh, material and so forth now, but you don't intend to install it with the rest until you have a tenant. Is that what I? Is that correct? Okay. So if we talk, if you talk, if you're referring to the, you know, the same building um, that we just, you know, discussed, <laughs> that one there's nothing there because I have been to the opposite side and it, it, it was completely you know, removed. Uh, it's just a wall now, so so there's nothing there. Apparently, the you know whatever was there it was completely you know, removed. Um, so that one is getting you know that would be you know, the main entry. He has a vestibule. That would be you know, the main entry into the apartment uh, uh, building, and that will, as I said, that would get a brand new uh, storefront. I was referring to the older two buildings. Storefronts uh, underneath that they vary in different styles because probably Greenbaum had maybe at one point um, had something and then there was another tenant that had something. So they're not quite you know unified into a you know one aesthetically uh, uh, pleasing or 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 um, you know uniform you know design. But um, right now there's no tenant um, yet at this point and. You know, we're looking for the the opportunity to provide the larger storefronts if needed, because you know it may in necessitate that. Uh, but the, the, yeah, the, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 So. So our intent is to refurbish, you know, what we can, and 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 then later, uh, so we'll move forward. Um, there may be introductions of uh, a newer storefront, but right now we're showing in the drawings to replace components of it that are really in a bad shape with a new storefront to match the the building that we just you know discussing. Uh, you know, the landscape you know, building up in the. That's how it's coming. Okay. Uh, well, uh, you said a lot of things, but what I, I want to try to go back uh, one step. So, the the storefront that's proposed for the limestone building is going to serve as the entrance to the historic uh, apartments, like in the smaller buildings. Is that right? Yes, that would be the main entry. Yes, right. That would be the main entry from the historic building. The new building has a separate entry because it's a separate building altogether. But that this entry will be the entry to the residential component of that building. Um, first, second, and third. And you know, it is a great entry because it already has an archway and everything. It would be a you know, fantastic, you know, way to enter a, a residential, you know, building. And then below that, in in the middle building and the lower building, is where we're going to have retail. And so Um, right now, there was no intent to remove them entirely. It's just to uh, you know refurbish them and, and repair them. Uh, but um, we, uh, there's no tenant yet, so uh, there's something to be discussed. <laughs> or what could be done with you know the existing storefronts if they are uh, uh, if they are uh, historical? Okay. No, because there seem to be a mix of different things. Right. Thank you, Mr. 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 Robert, I have a... Might I interject? Yeah, sure. Quick, quick question. So, on that note of uh, the 105 and, and 103 building, which is the middle building and the old Green Bond building, right now you plan to simply, you know, uh, remediate any issues and and put it back to a condition where it's usable. In the future, if the few, if the the uh, applicant wants to change it to a steel uh, aluminum frame uh, uh, storefront, you're going to come back with another application. I just want to clarify that. 
So you ask me? Um, uh, yes, I guess. Yeah, we we um, I guess uh, at that point, if when a tenant comes in and and there's a, a, a different storefront type, um, if probably as required, we will you know submit a a um, you know storefront uh, you know design you know for your review. Right, right. Because you know, right now. You're maintaining the existing. You're you're maintaining the existing, and you're preparing it for a potential uh, tenant that could use the existing infrastructure. But in the case that they want aluminum, uh, aluminum storefront, you'll propose a, a separate application in the future. Yeah, the, the, I, I see that the only way that it would um, uh, need a, a completely different application if everything is is removed and and and, and, and is a uh, storefront provided you know through the lamp for. Of the entire thing, if it's just to refurbish what is there now because they're storefronts and keep, you know, the, you know the framing, then the, you know if if the applicant um, keeps it, then I don't see you know they need to come back later and but uh, depending on how much is is removed, if a new tenant you know comes in and and there's, and there's a desire to uh, have larger you know windows, for okay. instance, you know, you know sure. display. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is Rich. Can I just go back to John Franco's original question? The two uh, openings that are doors on either side of that uh, original building he was talking about, uh, you're proposing to change those doors to windows. Are those going to be the same size as the doors, or are they going to be closed in at all? No, they're going to be the same size as the height. It, it, the height of in the opening, uh, yeah, is it, it, they are fixed. They are actually windows, in, you know, to the lobby and the and the exercise room. Uh, so they're full height. Uh, there's no door. They just fixed because you know we already have main entry. But it's respecting, you know, the the basically the you know the framing is the same as except that you know there's no doors. Uh, well, you know what it is is a, a frame with with a, a large you know glazing uh, uh, light and. and you know, in a transom. Yes. Okay, that's why I want to confirm that they're going to be the same size, basically, as the doors that were there. Okay. Yes, but yes, no door. It's just a fixed, you know, glaze. Yeah, glazing. Yeah. Wait, fixed glaze with transom. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any chance that it could be made to look like a door? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. The, f the frame, uh, there's no such frame that would, uh, I mean, if, if the styles are six inches wide, uh, the, uh, the, the, there's no frame available, that uh, fixed frame that, that would do that. Uh, but uh, if that's a requirement, that is show, okay? Uh, we, we just show a regular uh, store from frame that matches the, you know, the main entry. But, um, a wider style, it will be just be uh, either a fixed door that would not be open, and you know, so it will look exactly like what it used to be there. But the social thing as a, a six-inch uh, uh, thick frame, it, it could be done custom, but it's something that uh, um, that we will have to look into it if, if, if this is you know you know one of the components that that we will need to match. Okay, I'm just proposing that you check into it. I'm not required, just check into it, please. Uh, Vic, Vic, this is uh, Chair Tate with another question. This is around the corner on, on Ben Houghton Street. Um, yeah. If you go over to the fire, uh, the fire engine building that we retain, you guys are proposing to um, keep the historic columns and caps and infill uh, with iron iron gates, and there I guess be a sort of push panel uh, exit or entry. Can you talk a little bit more about that because uh, the functionality and the sort of the the, the look kind of has this. You know, can, uh, please please expand. Sure. So um, we 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 have seen pictures. I believe of the the old building um, right now. Of course, it was boarded up. There's no plywood there. You know, there, there's nothing behind. Um, there's cast Yes, iron uh, columns there, and the intent is to keep them. However, the uh, the alleyway is used as an exit, a means of egress, because we do, we do have exit stairs. So we're going to have the the gates that are provided. The, the raw iron are going to be have they, they will have panic you know, devices um, on on the opposite side. Plus, 
there's a gate because we do have garbage in those fossil there. So they're going to be open and, and there's a need to actually open them. And so in the center where we have you know, the water uh, component of, of the, of the, um, of the um, uh, frame there, uh, open, uh, it will be an actual gate that it's going to be locked and it's going to be used to remove garbage and, 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 and receiving into both buildings, into the existing building and, and the new building. Commissioner Walter, can I get a question on that now? Um, couldn't that look more like a uh, firehouse if you didn't put gates there and you put doors? Yeah, um, actually, I, I, I would say that firehouses really have um, you know, when I look at an old firehouse, and this is really an old one, um, the it wasn't I, I'm used to seeing. All they have is a you know a roll-up door gate, which is you know rather um, um, aesthetically wise, um, you know, it, it's not you know such a great thing. But but yeah, I've seen a variety of ones that maybe we can look into it. But then they're, they're really solid. This is more of a. There is a building, really nice, uh, fronting um, uh, Washington Street next door to this one here. That um, and you probably are familiar with this. That has a, a wrought iron gate, um, you know, between. You know, there's an alleyway there too, and it looks it was done really nice. Visibility uh, is very important here, you know, for safety. So having something uh, uh, open, if you will, so you can see in, it will be very, um, you know, desirable in my opinion, as opposed to something solid, uh, because that way you will be able to see. But, um, you know, if it's something that you, that, it, that we, you know, that, that you want to, uh, you know, to recommend looking at, we can. Uh, but right now, it's basically a row item um, uh, gate that uh, will be done really nice, but it's meant to really, it, it, it's a uh, utilitarian uh, gate and door that serves, you know, that purpose, yeah. Well, this Commissioner Walter again, the reason we want you to keep the facade is because it was one of the original firehouses in Patterson. So we wanted that facade, but we would like it to also look like one of the original firehouses in Paris. All the firehouses back in the 1800s had big wooden doors in the front, and you can see the hinges from them on the firehouses across the street from your project, and they have big wooden doors and wooden side doors. Uh, there's no reason that they have to be gates for security, but big wooden doors is very secure too. Okay. Uh, this is this is uh, Chair Tate, and I, I have a final question on the the firehouse since we're still on this topic. Mm -hmm. the, the in your presentation, it appears that you are well, at least from from what you said in during your presentation, the upper windows of the firehouse you guys will keep the same, correct? Correct. That was a requirement when we met first that the door windows were historical and will be, and that will remain. Yes. Right. From your presentation drawings and your elevations, it appears that those would those are replaced, even in the rendering. So I just want to clarify for the record that those would be, you know, refurbished with the divided lights, the way that we um, see them historically, and uh, they won't be changed. So mm -hmm. because the discrepancy between your presentation and the actual drawings. Well, maybe you know the rendering may have shown you know something, um, you know, just um, uh, a. You know, to capture, you know, was there, but but the actual construction documents indicate uh, the windows to remain as is, to be refurbished, but to remain, nothing will be you know, removed. So, just to clarify, the documents do show to remain. Sure. The check was very broad. Over here, I have to find a way to. Uh, if you if you see the elevation here, maybe this is missing. Yeah. This elevation in, in North Elevation One, if you look at that proportionality and you look at those windows, they don't appear to be the historic windows. And that that's where my question came in. Okay, so we're talking about seven, and I'm reading seven. 
Right. If you look at the firehouse and you look at those upper buildings, those upper... The, yeah, the, so the, the other discrepancy that we noticed during our review was if you look at the windows along that Ben Houghton side, on the entire facade that you guys are, are sort of retaining, if you look at the cornice and then you look at the top of the windows on the upper level, which you guys are proposing to replace, if you look at the amount of masonry between the top of the window, the window header and the underside of the, the cornice, there appears to be a large uh, uh, area of, of masonry that's not true to what's existing currently. And that's yeah. something we have an issue with. Right. Well, we're not proposing to change anything. This may be, uh, uh, and I want to say it's a graphic um, issue here, but it, the, uh, for some reason, you know, the building was drawn a little um, high-wise, not quite uh, as, as um, we look into this, but we're not uh, replacing anything. The existing brick facade is to remain as is, just to clarify. Nothing will change it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for clarifying that the upper window on the firehouse will remain the same as well. Okay. And if it's a graphic, it may be a graphic um, representation there that, that wasn't captured, but, but yeah, uh, everything. And if it's not, we will it will make it. So it's, it's, it, it remains. Confirmed. Yeah. Executive Director, do you see any other hands or questions? We do not hear you. Uh, Executive Director, do we have any? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Um, uh, no, I, I, I don't see, I, actually I see Commissioner, well, no, it's all changing. Commissioner Corvo, do you have a question? You have to unmute Commissioner Corvo. I'm sorry. I was wondering if we could hear the uh, design committee report. Well, that will come after we get into discussion. Okay, thank you. I have a follow-up question to Commissioner Walter's question about the gates, uh, the iron gates in the firehouse facade. I, I still don't know if I understand uh, the intentions. You mentioned, uh, you know, garbage areas. You mentioned egress, uh, paddock hardware, all sorts of stuff you mentioned. But I'm not clear if there's an alleyway going all the way back. Like, there's a building there now that you wish to remove. And also, in the rendering you showed us, the facade is incorporated into, like, the new building. So it looks like the new building is taking the place of the existing, you know, small firehouse building, uh, but that's not the case. We, we discussed this during the during the review last time as well. That uh, the, the drawings showed the desire to have the new building uh, remove the firehouse and go all the way to the uh, edge of the um, historic building. So now that you're maintaining the firehouse facade, that's not happening anymore. You're describing an alleyway and, and garbage and egress. What has changed? Can you please explain that so I can understand it? Because I don't think I understand why that's changed at this point. Change. Okay. Well, the facade uh, is to remain. Uh, beyond that, the existing building will be you know, demolished. And between the two... Uh, Buildings, there's a, uh, a separation, a fire, you know, separation that we have to uh, provide. Plus, is that alleyway we continues all the way to the very end. That um, there's an exit stairs there, and, and there's also uh, provisions for garbage, you know, disposal there. So, uh, within that alleyway, is it, it has a dual uh, uh, use. It, it will be used as an ingress um, for the building. For the building, uh, and also a, a way of, of moving um, garbage out. So, okay, I think I don't know your question, but um, that's uh, that's what we have. Be, be, be okay, so when 
when you say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when you say alleyway, I just want to clarify this. It's it's an alleyway, but it's a it's a it's space the full width of the existing building, correct? Correct, correct. So the existing building okay. is completely demolished. It's the only thing that remained was is a facade that we are going to keep. Yes. Okay. So there, it's not the the gate won't be used for moving vehicles in and out. It's to bring garbage like forward. You put the garbage out for pickup at the you know several times a week in dumpsters, uh, and then the need for people to leave uh, uh, through the facade in, in, in the event of an emergency or fire, for example, is another important aspect. What about the use of that alleyway as another entrance for residents into the, into the buildings, whether it be the, <clears throat> the historic buildings on the right or the historic buildings, I mean the new building on the left? Will that be a com common entrance as well, an alternative entrance? Or no. will it always be closed to residents and only for use and for, for leaving in an emergency? Yes, that's the intent. Both buildings have their own beautiful entrances you know, right now. Uh, the, the, the new building has uh, uh, an entrance dedicated for a new building, and, and, the, um, and the assistant building has the, the entry uh, of the, um, on the upper um, uh, historical you know, building. So this particular facade, it was never meant to be a main entry into any building. Uh, because it cannot be, uh, really, because we have to respect uh, a separation. Uh, the intent was to um, uh, remove uh, the building, as we discussed earlier, in our first bidding, and just keep you know, the facade. So the facade um, is just a means of, um, um, uh, below at least, to um, uh, use for the removal of garbage and to have people coming in and out, um, not so much in, but uh, out. Uh, residents may be able to come out, uh, out of there, uh, not really to come in inside you know, the building, you know, through there. Uh, so that's the, the intent. That's the intent. Uh, this, is, this is Commissioner. Thank you. This is Commissioner Tate again on this firehouse building. So at this threshold, uh, just two, two questions. Uh, the first one is, what's the, the ground surface on that alleyway and the second question is uh, since we're talking about that being sort of a garbage uh trans transport uh portal will, will maintenance be part of the uh equation in terms of keeping debris and everything like that clear yeah so the the finish uh, is you know we have paper so we have we will have concrete Paving, uh, I show all our drawings. I don't have I don't have them here, but our simple drawings and our drawings do show paving along the the, the stretch of the of the so called you know alleyway. It has to be because we want to be egress in there, and, and it cannot be just dirt. So so we do have uh, concrete paving, um, but. Uh, you know, this will be maintained uh, and clear. It will never uh, be, you know, because uh, you know the, the issues with you know security and also uh, egressing. So uh, and it's going to be light. It's going to be lit at all times, a, because we need to have lighting, you know, for egressing. By call, we have to have lighting at all times. So that alleyway, if you will, is going to be lit at all times. Uh, and it's not, you know, something that will be uh, full of garbage at all. None. Confirm. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Commissioner Walter. Yeah, uh, that brought up another question that we discussed uh, what the side was going to be like and, uh, you know, other paving questions at all. Anybody got questions on those? Well, are, are the sidewalks being replaced entirely, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, or not, not at all? And the other uh, uh, thing that was missing from your presentation was any lighting. Can you address those uh, items, please? Lighting with the sidewalk, you don't remember? No, in general, whatever lighting is proposed on the exterior of the building. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. I mean, this is something. This is something that we can review separately. Um, you know, on a case by case basis when we get to that, or you can present it now. 
And so I'm contacted now. Right now. I, I don't have a lighting plan here, but I can guide you into what we're doing for you know, for the new building. And we are providing, yes, we are providing light uh, at the main uh, entry. But we decide uh, due to emergency, you know, your requirements, normally we've got to have emergency, you know, lighting. There are down lights uh, because, you know, the, the bang entry has a double height um, uh, software box, so, so there's lighting, that down lights there, but on the side, on either side of the entry, we have um, lights uh, on the piers, uh, you know, software mounted light fixtures that are, are, are um, you know, complementing a lower scale, um, um, uh, scale while walking. And then at the retail, we also have lighting on, at the uh, soffit because, you know, the retail is, is set back too. So we do have lighting there, um, uh, down lights. And then at the perimeter of the building, now visible from the sidewalk, we, we have lighting to wow in the perimeter by, uh, because, you know, by coal, as I said, in both ends, the egress uh, um, um, setbacks and alleyways, so they need to be lit at all times. So the perimeter of the building on the sides and at the rear is lit. The front has light lighting, um, not, you know, but it's lighting that is, that you really like going to see, you're going to see, you know, two light features on the main entry, mounted on the surface and then the lobby will always you know, be lit but there are down lights that I can explain to you if, if we go to the to the facade or the existing I mean the, the proposal I can, I can, at least I can indicate where um, so the main entry right now is, is right right here that's the main entry right there and, the, and there's a light fixture right I mean it's not hard to see but there's a light fixture on on each of the spheres here, surface mounted, and then right here at this location where it's, it's set back, the down lights, plus the sliding where it's thrown here. That's what we have. And then at the opening, you know, for the uh, you know garage, the garage is lit. So that that's what we you know fairly lit. And right at, at, at the perimeter here, at the very you know beginning, you know, you want to have you know light fixtures. So the garage is going to be, you know, fairly, you know, lit. We're providing, you know, the full canvas uh, by code. Yeah. That's that's what we have. Oh, the that's new building. How about the old buildings? Any lighting being added to them? Yeah. So uh, in the new, excuse me, in the existing building, at the main entry, is the same thing. We do have lot. We do have. I'm going to the point right now, it's an open up yet. Yeah, all right, so uh, A101, the main entry is right here. We do have light fixtures from either side here, uh, and down lights, down lights, you know, here too. So as you walk, you know, the sidewalk is going to be lit, and there's going to be down lights. A lot of those lights are used for emergency, you know, purposes. By cold, you've got to have uh, a couple of light fixtures on the outside that in case of emergency, they will remain lit, battery, you know, power, uh, or, or otherwise. Uh, but the remaining of the of the of the um, of the facade uh, where the existing uh, storefronts are, we we're not providing any light fixture there at this point because there may be signage, you know, later. Uh, but we don't have any flood lights, and I don't think that you will want a flood light in, in, on on, in, on the uh, existing, you know, historical, you know, facade. Uh, the storefronts do not have right now any lighting that there's an existing. Step back here, uh, an entry point that probably has a, a down light uh, right at this point here. But the assistant does not have any, you know, any lighting. I can I can go back to the assistant of the um, the original, uh, you know, greenbound, uh, human greenbound, <clears throat> and I'm looking at trying to find here if there's any lighting. There's probably some lighting underneath you. I see it uh, underneath this um, overhang, uh, uh, right overhang. There's some lighting here, but uh, that is. Something applied that is now physical in, on, mounted on the building. This is depending on what's going to happen later on the retail you know, side of this project. If uh, when the new tenant comes in, what kind of lighting uh, are we going to be putting there? You know, for signage. Uh, Victor, this is Chair Tate again regarding uh, signing. So, right now, I just want to be clear um, for. On 107 Washington Street, which is uh, 
uh, block 4407, lot 22. Uh, <clears throat> essentially, that's the building to the, the new residential. You, I believe you mentioned that you guys are going to do surface mounted lighting the same way you're doing on the new building. Oh, this is on Washington Street. Oh, Washington, yeah, well, yes, uh, we are going to be mounting a uh, life, uh, yes, a light fixture on the recess, not in the front, but on the recess of, of the, where you enter. Um, oh, e e yes. Yeah. Well, as I say, if that's visible, visible from the front elevation, what, even though it's side mounted right before you enter the vestibule, that, that light fixture needs to be reviewed uh, internally by the HPC director. Okay, so we will, um, these light fixtures are aesthetically um, conservative. They are vandal proof. They won't break, you know, they especially made, you know, for exterior use, they're vandal proof. So we can furnish a, a cut for that fixture. Right, right. As long as it's visible, we'll need to have that administratively okay. reviewed. That's fine. Thank you. And if you let me, well, of course, you know, I, I you know, you guys are going to let me know what, um, you know, how, you know, to do that, and that will happen next. Sure. Yeah. Executive Director, do we have any more questions or comments from the uh, chair or for the from the commission? Well, it looks like uh, Walter, Commissioner Walter, may have a question, or is that just from before? I mean, that's from before. I'm trying to turn it off, but I can't seem to turn it off. Okay, no problem. Um, very good, Mr. Chairman. I don't see any other uh, questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to have the secretary open this up. Can you provide the, the telephone number, Colin? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one moment, please. Those who would like to participate in the public portion may call in at 973-321-1579 and enter meeting ID 711-680-001. To repeat, those who would like to participate in the public portion may call in at 973-321-1579 and enter meeting ID 711-680-001. Thank you, Tim. Right now, the time is 8.30 p.m. We're going to keep the line open till 8.33. Thank you very much.
Okay, the time is now 8.33 p.m. Executive Director, can you confirm with IT if there are any callers regarding this particular application? Mr. Chairman, IT has confirmed that there are no callers. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to have the Secretary provide the resolution statement of purpose for this particular project. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Resolution number 20-23 is the conditional approval of a design review application for the properties located at 103-107 Washington Street, Block 4407, Lots 1, 22, and 23, and 112-126 Van Street, Block 4407, Lots 2 through 6, located within the designated Downtown Commercial Historic District. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to request a motion from the floor for this resolution. So moved. All right, we have motion by uh, by Vice Chair Raphael. Mm -hmm. Do we have uh, a second? A second. I, I heard uh, Commissioner Walter second. Confirmed, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Uh, if it makes sense to you guys, I can read our uh, design committee report on this particular application. That would be advisable. That would be advisable. Okay. All right. So we're going to start on uh, page three of the document. This, I just want to say, uh, please, please uh, understand there might be some redundancy from uh, building to building because there's, there's sort of a continuity that we're trying to achieve. And uh, so it sort of makes sense to you as you listen along. All right, so we'll, we'll start off with, uh, uh, and, and Executive Director, you can, you can go uh, forward. I'll just read and, and, uh, and whatnot. We're going to start off with 114-126 Van Houten Street, Block 4407, Lots 2 through 6. This is the new building. And within that uh, sort of uh, street elevation, we have 124 and 126. Van Houten Street, which are currently empty lots, 114 through 118 and 120 through 122 Van Houten Street are the warehouses that are, that are to be demolished. 120, uh, I'm sorry, 112 Van Houten Street Engine uh, Company, number one firehouse facade to remain, built to be demolished. Here are the committee, uh, the committee's recommendations for the new building. The new building uh, construction masonry, the design review committee recommends that all brick and grout materials as indicated on architectural drawings as black and white shall be internally reviewed by the HPC director, Giancarlo Archimede and staff for confirmed materiality as required. See elevation sheet A201 for more information. For new construction glazing, architects shall provide a bronze, metal and glass mock-up and or control samples of proposed window materials to be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco Archimede and staff for confirmed materiality as required. Uh, any proposed security film material shall be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco and staff for confirmed materiality as required. Regarding all store frontage uh, uh, and signage, as required, the existing uh, awning is removed. Architects shall thoroughly review the existing conditions of the structure for, for integrity. Architects shall restore the underside of the existing awning to acceptable building conditions and standards. Additionally, the Building Review Committee recommends a flat sign per historic preservation guidelines as opposed to reinstallation of an awning. Design Review Committee recommends architect to consider the design board approach as per Great Falls historic uh, uh, guidelines. Regarding the exterior rolling gate, the Design Review Committee recommends no exterior rolling gates. 
Architect shall consider internal rolling gate or secure, secure, I'm sorry, security components to be installed and housed inside of the storefront as required. Regarding the existing firehouse facade attachment, see below review co uh, committee co uh, recommendation, recommendations. A uh, general note, the design review committee recommends any updated renderings or representation of materiality as it relates to the proposed colors, materiality, and proportions of HBC internal review and reference. We can, we, we can discuss that because they presented pretty fair renderings during this application. Uh, regarding uh, the firehouse facade, uh, clean and wash all masonry uh, uh, evaluation, repair, and repointing to be prepared uh, for review by HPC director for next stages of review. Regarding architectural proportions for clarity, architects shall review all provided uh, and provide all updated elevations for accuracy of representation of the cornice, masonry heights, and glazing for proposed structure. The current elevations do not match the existing and conditions of the, the existing conditions of the building as it relates to the existing building on lot one. The drawings do not currently reflect the accurate proportions of the proposed upper windows at the existing building's third floor line. Uh, the gate at the lower right of the uh, north elevation at the firehouse. Architects shall revisit design and proportions of the proposed wrought iron gate and filled at the, at the cast iron column, column entry per sheet uh, EX-202, note number 16. Proposed design shall be reviewed by HPC director and administratively confirmed internally. The existing cornice and coping, the design review committee recommends architect to provide detailed cornice sketch and documents at appropriate time after mason repair within architect's construction schedule for review. The design review committee recommends that any remediation work shall be performed before installation of any proposed work. Existing wood entry and wood covers, and this is for that Van Houten side and also Washington Street on the two corner buildings. Uh, we, we confirmed design review committee recommends the repairing and repainted repainting of existing wood window openings and covers as proposed by the architect on sheet EX202. Firehouse windows, architect shall revisit the design and proportions of the windows as they do not relate to the historic structure that is being replaced. And during our meeting, the applicant confirmed that they will be using the existing windows at the upper level, so this will be updated accordingly. Uh, new construction masonry, as proposed, masonry and grout at the masonry joints for repainting, repointing shall be internally reviewed by HPC director Gianfranco Archimede and staff for confirmed materiality as required. Uh, for new construction glazing, Architect shall provide a bronze, metal, and glass mock-up and or control samples of proposed window materials to be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco Archimede and staff for confirmed materiality as required. In general, at the firehouse, some semblance of the firehouse shall be integrated into the new design as per Commissioner Walter's statements during our questioning session. That's uh, one of the... That's, uh, the uh, Manhattan side, for the most part, we're going to move along to 103 Washington Street, Block 4407, Lot 1. Any recommendations? Regarding architectural proportions for, cl for clarity, architects shall review all and, I'm sorry, review all and provide updated elevations for accuracy and representation of the cornice and masonry heights for the proposed structure. The current elevations do not match the existing conditions of the building as it relates to the existing building on lot 22. The drawings do not reflect uh, the accurate proportions of the proposed upper windows at the existing building's third floor. The lintels. Architects shall remove paint from the lintels and sills in order to delineate it from the proposed repainted masonry structure. As the uh, applicant mentioned, the, the building's been painted numerous times. Regarding the existing cornice and coping, the existing cornice shall be protected, repaired, and repainted to match existing conditions throughout as required. 
The complete cornice shall be specifically evaluated and restored in kind. The Design Review Committee recommends architects to provide detailed corner sketch and details or, or documents at the appropriate time after any mason repairs within the architect's construction schedule for HPC director's immediate review. The Design Review Committee recommends that any remediation work shall be performed before installation of any proposed work. Regarding stonework, this is confirmed. The Design Review Committee recommends that exterior, the exterior be cleaned and repaired as required. Buildings shall not be painted. All proposed stonework methodology shall be handled according to the Secretary of Interior standards for the treatment of historic properties as required. And this is typical throughout these buildings. The Design Review Committee recommends that any remediation work shall be performed before installation of any proposed work. Regarding security film, materials shall be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco and staff to confirm materiality as required, store function signage as required. When the existing awning is removed, architects shall thoroughly review the existing conditions of the structure for integrity. Architects shall restore the underside of the existing awning to acceptable building conditions and standards. Additionally, the Design Review Committee recommends a flat sign per historic preservation uh, guidelines as opposed to reinstallation of the awning. Design Review Committee recommends architect to consider the sign board approach as per Great Fall Historic District guidelines. The exterior rolling gate. The Design Review Committee recommends no exterior rolling gates. Architect shall consider internal rolling gate or security components to be installed and housed inside of the storefront as required. Regarding paint, all exterior proposed paint colors, specifications, and qualities to match existing shall be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco Archimede and staff for confirmed material. To uh, Building 105, Washington Street, which is Block 4407, Lot 23. This is another rehabilitation. I'm going to skip over the description of the work and go to the recommendations. Uh, as per the previous building, cleaning and washing all terracotta, uh, cleaning, evaluation, repair, and repointing to be prepared and reviewed by HPC director for next stages of review. The existing corners and coping, the design review committee recommends the architect to provide detailed corner sketches and documents at appropriate time for masonry review, or, or I'm sorry, after masonry repair, within the review committee recommends that any remediation work shall be performed before installation of any proposed work. Like before, regarding the stonework, this is confirmed. The design review committee recommends that exterior ter terracotta be cleaned and repaired and prepared as required. Buildings shall not be painted. Uh, all proposed stonework methodology shall be handled according to the Secretary of, Insta of, of Interior Standards for Treatment of Historic Properties as required. This is typical. The Design Review Committee recommends that any remediation work shall be performed before installation of any proposed work. Regarding the, the existing windows, this is confirmed. The Design Review Committee recommends that the existing double-hung replacement windows remain. This was indicated by the applicant on their drawings. Regarding the proposed doors, architects shall provide detailed elevations, cut sheets, specifications, and materiality of all proposed doors to be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco Archimede and staff for confirmed materiality as required. Now, they did provide a, a, a door schedule or a window schedule, which does include some doors, so that will be uh, uh, carefully reviewed as part of this requirement. Um, regarding the new construction glazing, the architect shall provide a, a bronze, metal, and glass mock-up and or control samples for proposed windows and door materials to be internally reviewed by the HPC director, Gianfranco, and staff for confirmed materiality as required. Uh, like before, the material shall be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco and staff for confirmed materiality as required. The storefront wood, wood and trim on the corner building of the old green bomb is confirmed 
As proposed by the architect, the design review committee recommends the repairing and repainting of the existing facade to match existing. Regarding store uh, signage, as required, when the building, the existing building on is removed, architects shall thoroughly review the existing conditions of the structure for integrity. Architects shall receive. Uh, uh, as proposed in drawings to acceptable building conditions, regulations, and standards. Additionally, the Design Review Committee recommends a flat sign per historic preservation guidelines, as opposed to the reinstallation of an awning. Design Review Committee recommends architects to consider the sign board approach as per Great Fall Historic Guidelines. Exterior rolling gate, like before, the Design Review Committee recommends no exterior rolling gates. Architects shall consider internal rolling gate or security components to be installed and housed inside of the storefront as required. Uh, as a typical note, I'd like to add on about the paint. Any required exterior paint color specifications and qualities to match existing shall be internally reviewed by the HPC Director, Gianfranco, Archimede, and staff for Confirm materiality as required. The existing masonry structure shall not be painted. Uh, and, and just as a note, unless otherwise noted, because there's one building that was the, the existing terracotta was painted over, that's something that can be dealt with internally. Uh, for the last building on this uh, series of buildings, we're going to go to 107 Washington Street, which is Block 4407, Lot 22. This is another. Uh, rehabilitation within this series of structures. I'm going to skip over the description of the work, the scope of work, and jump directly to the committee recommendations. Like the other buildings in this lot, this lot uh, series, the cleaning and washing, all limestone cleaning, evaluation, repairing, and repointing to be prepared and reviewed by HPC director for next stages of review. The reason why we do this is we want to make sure that Jim Franco is aware of, of the, the, the various uh, critical stages of these the, the, uh, the facade phases. Uh, regarding the, the cornice and coping, the Design Review Committee recommends architects to provide detailed cornice sketch and documents at the appropriate time after masonry repair within the architect's construction schedule for review, if necessary, for proposed work. Uh, regarding stonework, like before, this is confirmed. The Design Review Committee recommends the ex exterior limestone be cleaned and repaired as required. Buildings shall not be painted. All proposed stonework methodology shall be handled according to the Secretary of Interior Standards for the treatment of historic properties as required. Typical. The Design Review Committee recommends any remediation work shall be performed before installation of any proposed work. Regarding the exterior masonry, and this, this might be redundant, this is confirmed, the design review recommends that exterior work be cleaned and repaired as required. Regarding the proposed doors, architects shall provide detailed elevations, cut sheets, specifications, and materiality of all proposed doors to be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco Archimede and staff for confirmed materiality as required. This is another typical note. The, the Design Review Committee recommends that the replacement of the opening shall appear as fold doors with transom for historic continuity. Now, just to clarify this note, the fold doors is really about the proportionality of the existing doors into that new residential uh, structure on that building facade. Uh, regarding the construction blazing, architects shall provide a bronze, metal, and glass mock-up and or control samples of proposed windows and door materials to be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco Archimede and staff for confirmed materiality as required. This is typical. Regarding the new storefront system, architects shall provide control samples of aluminum storefront colors, color materials to be um, interior, uh, internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco Archimede um, for review of materials as required. This is typical. The steel frame window, and this was addressed during the uh, uh, question and answer session, the steel frame windows to be reviewed and evaluated for reglazing. Uh, if we require to replace, which the applicant wants to replace, the design review committee recommends that the repla replacement of these windows shall have muntins proportioned to match the existing windows in kind. 
Very important note. Regarding security film, material shall be internally reviewed by HPC director Gianfranco uh, and staff uh, for confirmed materiality as required. Um, and then uh, storefront signage as required when the existing awning is removed. Architects shall thoroughly review the existing conditions of the structure for integrity. Architects shall, architects shall re, uh, restore and repatch the underside of existing awning as proposed in drawings to acceptable building conditions, regulations, and standards. Additionally, the Design Review Committee recommends a flat sign per historic preservation uh, guidelines as opposed to reinstallation of an awning. Design Review Committee recommends architect to consider the sign board approach as per historic, uh, uh, Great Fall Historic District guidelines. Regarding exterior rolling gate, I know I sound like a broken record here. The Design Review Committee recommends no exterior rolling gates. Architects shall consider internal rolling gate or security components to be installed and housed inside of the storefront as required. And the last note on our report is about paint. Um, all proposed paint colors and quality shall be internally reviewed by HPC Director Gianfranco Archimede and staff for confirmed materiality as required. Existing masonry structures shall not be painted. Uh, and that concludes our report. The floor is open for discussion. Commissioner Walter, go ahead. Well, first, I want to thank Will for that great report. It was a long meeting we had, and to get it all in there, you did a great job. Wonderful report. Uh, next thing I'd like to ask is, uh, can we require them to provide some signage on the historic uh, history of each of those buildings? Some signage there, so when people are in the neighborhood, they know what used to be there and what it was used for? Okay, is that your recommendation uh, as a condition? I would think so, because there's very, uh, some very historic and significant buildings there that should, their pay should be on it. Okay, thank you. I, I'm any added other, that. Uh, co comments, um, any other comments from commissioners about uh, whether the, the report or anything else that you'd like to uh, comment on, including about your thoughts on this project, etc.? I'd like to, uh, this is Chair Tate. We, we met last Thursday and we really uh, went through the ins and outs of this, this building. And um, I, I wanted to say that this project, the, the proposal is a, you know, I think it's a phenomenal add to the downtown, the, the Great Falls Historic District. I do believe that it needs to be done right. And this is why we were very critical on the questions that we put forth in our report. Um, it may seem like a lot, but the information that we included, the very nuanced and deep, you know, skim through details will make the difference on the, the uh, manifestation of this project in, in various ways. Um, you know, everything from, you know, the, uh, re, you know, retaining, you know, existing masonry and, and, and the evaluation of the cornice details and things of that nature. I just want to uh, say, say to the commission, you know, this, this project is very well thought through. And of course, you know, like every project, there's certain, you know, nuanced expressions that need some sort of questioning in order to kind of clarify it and make it, you know, something that we, we, we think is acceptable for our districts. Uh, this is Jeff Bronco. Uh, I'd like to follow up uh, with both comments. I, I also would be, the committee report was very thorough and excellent. And again, I also um, like to thank uh, uh, the chairman for preparing this report and follow up to a long uh, meeting uh, this is a, a large project. It involves um, uh, several very significant pieces of architecture in our downtown 
with uh, with each with their own unique uh, architectural history, as uh, Commissioner Walter mentioned. Um, but you know, even given the long list of, of uh, conditions or uh, proposals that uh, were mentioned in the report, uh, I want to say that the applicants uh, already considered most of these. So these aren't like new or additional items that were added on uh, because they were thought up by the committee, for example. This is, uh, a lot of this was very standard uh, historic preservation uh, under the standard of rehabilitation according to the Secretary of Interior standards. Uh, we acknowledge that the uh, architectural firm is a very accomplished and experienced uh, firm with regard to historic preservation in uh, large cities and many communities. Uh, this, uh, this work is uh, kind of in their um, portfolio, and we appreciate also that the uh, owners of the project have brought on uh, an excellent and knowledge knowledgeable firm to present these uh, these drawings. Uh, that includes the uh, presenters this evening, uh, Mr. Rodriguez. I'd like to thank him for his thorough presentation and the thoughtfulness that the team went through to prepare these drawings for our submission. Um, uh, they knew that we would be doing this review, and they prepared their plans with uh, a lot of detail. Although we did find some glaring errors in the plans that were noted by the chair in the uh, in the report. We can still get through the review, uh, the cleaning of the masonry, the repointing of the masonry, the demonstration, uh, just all of these details. Many of them were already considered in, in part of the uh, uh, plans that were submitted. Um, other items were not necessarily thought of, for example, the rolling gates and, and security. Um, this is something, again, typically that we do. All the commissioners know this and also the uh, recommendations for signage treatments that also are not part of the application right tonight. Um, additional uh, work, follow-up you know, follow to the major work to these projects, for example, uh, signage and uh, so forth would be handled in separate applications to us, uh, smaller applications. I think we also need to include that um, any exterior lighting needs to be internally reviewed as well. I don't remember that being part of the uh, committee's report or uh, that's a recommendation. I think we should add uh, to to our uh, our resolution. Uh, but again, in summary, I just wanted to let everyone know that some of these items are already suggested by the plans, and we are confirming them with this report. Another set of items are typical uh, that the Preservation Commission adds to um, most of the applications uh, for facade rehabilitation in the downtown, and others um, are more particular. So uh, we want to maybe focus, especially on Richard Walter's comments earlier, and our focus on the uh, firehouse facade um, uh, rehabilitation. Uh, I want to put a picture up on screen and maybe ask people to make comments about this one so that it's clear to everyone. Uh, I'm going to put a photo up on screen for discussion on this. This is the firehouse facade uh, in current conditions. The windows that were discussed in the uh, presentation to, to remain are these windows in both floors. Uh, these are unique. I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything. Sorry. Okay, hold on. It's coming. Hold on. Hold on now. I got it down. Okay. I had to share that screen. So uh, this is the facade of the firehouse uh, that we were discussing. I wanted to point out that the upper windows in these two stories, these uh, bays of three windows, um, are existing, intact, and serviceable. These are the three windows, uh, the, uh, the two bays of windows that we discussed would, would remain and be rehabilitated as part of, um, of this project. Uh, this is something that was discussed in the first meeting and the second meeting. Um, here down below, there is uh, sort of uh, two cast iron columns which we retained and restored, and the proposal is to uh, put in iron gates on you know in all of these openings, basically, uh, as was discussed uh, in you know in the presentation. You can see also that the building has been painted, um, and in most cases. Uh, the, the applications were to the applicants were to clean, wash, 
and then you know repaint the surfaces that already have been painted. Um, so I wanted to just mention that this is also something that was um, maintained and, and suggested uh, in, in a congruent with and in keeping with what was presented in the plans. Um, I want to stop here, though, and ask um, other commissioners if they want to make comments about this facade uh, for any other comments that, that we might may have missed or you want to emphasize for the uh, for the treatment. So these are then a little bit, I think we have a little bit different idea or that might differ from what was submitted. For example, uh, the notion of these openings being wooden doors, Commissioner Walter brought that up. Is that something that we want to discuss now? Um, this is Chair Tate. I, I think we could explore, I understand the intention that uh, Commissioner Walsh wants in terms of the semblance of the existing firehouse, especially with its uh, sort of, uh, ge you know, um, its, its geographic adjacency to the, the firehouse across the street. Um, I, think, I think since this is sort of a isolated project within a larger, larger project, I'm wondering if it's possible for the applicant to propose a series of options that would, um, you know, express, you know, some kind of wood, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, elevation that that kind of brings brings back that notion of, of the the firehouse um, as as sort of a you know uh, caveat to this notion of of, of this the the iron. The iron uh, interface, if you will. I agree with uh, Will's suggestion there because I too echo Rich's sen sentiments on sort of bringing back some elements of uh, the former firehouse. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's another. Uh place that I think we might want to look at specifically in a photo and maybe discuss it a little. I'm going to go to that spot now in the photos, if you don't mind. I think I may have to use my um, That's not it. That's not it. That's not it, but I think it's this one, yeah. Okay, please bear with me, I'm almost there. Do you everyone see this pink news picture on screen? I do. I do. Okay. Yes. So there was um, there was some discussion in the in the uh, committee report and questions uh, for the architect and the presentation about these windows. These windows uh, below the triumphant arch and the um, and the eagle here on the second uh, floor are steel framed authentic windows uh, that are intact uh, and in place. I believe they're steel framed and maybe bronze uh, now that I uh, think of it. They are being proposed for replacement with uh, aluminum units and the, the committee's report was A, to uh, look into the uh, restoration of these uh, authentic windows in, in place and as they are and to have them reglazed and cleaned and uh, preserved in place. And the other was to, um, uh, if these windows were not serviceable and could not be preserved, then the replacement, aluminum uh, replacements would uh, match the um, muntins and the, uh, the number of lights and so forth in, in, the, in the originals. The other um, thing that we discussed was about the the storefront is definitely coming into play here. 
uh, as the main entrance to the historic portion of the uh, apartment apartment complex, and then these uh, two flanking openings. So down here at the bottom of the screen is one of them. You can't see the other on the other side, but um, these are suggested to be uh, glazed with, with large windows, basically, with a transom. So it looks like this uh, that you see here, except that it's all glass and there's no door. And uh, I believe the recommendation was to explore having this uh, either be a faux door, which means it would not be glazed anymore. It would be a transom with a, a fake door, if you will, um, on both sides. Um, I just want to have some discussion about that. Is that maybe I misunderstood, or is that what, uh, what I understood to be the recommendation? So uh, I just want to ex explain that. I think with the faux door concept, it doesn't necessarily have to be solid. I imagine it as uh, glazing except the proportions of it would almost be like the, the, the door that they're removing. So you would, you would still have your transom and you would have your glazing below, but the, the rectangular infill would sort of mimic the proportions of a standard door at that location. So the, the, the idea, the big idea here is when you look at that elevation, you see the celebration of entry into the building, which would be the center under the triumphant or arch, but to the left and right, you would see the glazing as some sort of uh, replication of the door proportions. But in, in reality, there would be windows beyond. And I believe one is into the gym. And I, I can't recall what the other, uh, the one to the left is, if that clarifies it. Yeah, that was my intention. That's right. Okay. That was what, so that's what's on the table from the report. Okay, great. The building next to it, this is a Wentworth building. This is a unique uh, architectural facade. Uh, and as the gentleman mentioned in the presentation, this, this is a terracotta building that was painted, and it's going to remain as painted. Uh, even you can see a two-tone sort of approach that they took in the time that they painted it. Uh, this is easily handled with regard to clean washing, uh, identifying need to repair, and then recoding it. Um, but the windows that are in here are intact and serviceable and are proposed to remain, which we agree with. Uh, the storefront as well, at, uh, down below that wraps around the two buildings, um, is again, pretty standard preservation approach of, um, kind of maintain, repair as needed, uh, repaint. That's what's on the table for the storefront around. Uh, so thank you very much for indulging my, um, specific uh, clarifications needed in these two areas. Um, a third one and the final one would be the windows in the corner building, which is the sort of the oldest of the buildings or the older of, of the buildings. Uh, they are wood frame windows. Many of them are authentic. They have a bar sort of in the middle so that they divide the lights as being two over two. They're, they're quite nice in that they're long, kind of when you look at them, um, the, uh, two, the, the two over two breakdown is not, uh, interrupted by a horizontal mountain to make it like four over four. So it's, it's sort of two over two, uh, sort of a unique design. I'm not sure what you think about, and it was represented in the presentation that the replacement demonstration would mimic the existing conditions. So, I mean, these are double hung. The, I, I need to clarify if you think uh, these also should be double hung, um, or if they should maintain that um, that uh, vertical bar down through the center of both um, both of the sashes. Uh, this is Chair Tate. I, I like to echo the latter of your options, where the vertical bar sort of breaks the um, the, the the light. And the only reason I say that is, you know, if you look at the scale of that that entire elevation on that street, the um, the beauty of, of the, the the vertical bar is it it scales that building down a little bit, and it kind of gives it you know a historic quality that I think should be retained in the new windows. And um, you know, I, I think it falls within the the standard of interiors. Um, you know, guidelines regarding how we approach, you know, preservation. And I, and I understand that the windows might be deteriorated. And um, I don't think that it, it, it wouldn't, the, the bright lights or, or the, the bar would interfere with any of the, of the, the uh, required light and air calculations that they're 
uh, they need, obviously. So I think we should we should keep that vertical bar um, as part of the du double hung situation that they're proposing. Oh, thank you, uh, yes, Walter. You have something? Yeah, I just I want to agree with that. That should be kept the same. It also will differentiate that building a little from the one to the right of it. But my more concern on this building, when you're looking at those windows right now, is that the uh, lentils and the sills seem to be painted uh, also, just like to brick. I was wondering if those lentils and sills could be, uh, be removed, uh, the paint removed from them so we get the natural back, or at least if they could be, uh, at the very, very least, painted uh, in a different color than the, you know, the, the brick uh, background. Yes, that was uh, already uh, stated in the report. That was the recommendation in the report, uh, so that this wouldn't look like one monotonous uh, surface. It would add a lot uh, of character to this building that was intended from its original design to have these cleaned and maintained, and then the replacement windows to add the additional um, vertical bar. Um, so thank you, Rich, for those comments. And we have uh, uh, Commissioner Redman. Yeah, yeah, so I just wanted to let you guys know, I, unfortunately, I have to leave the meeting, and I just wanted to make sure that we still had a quorum. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> let me see if you, let me count the number of members we have. We have Corvo, Rafael, Walter, and we have Tate, um, and we have also um, uh, the lease. So yes, if you leave, we would still have a quorum. Um, I, I just like to say I'm I'm concluded with my comments at this time. Okay, so are, are we, if we're going to vote on a motion, then I'll, I'll stay for the vote, but I have to leave after that. Okay, okay. I have one more comment. Uh, I've been focusing on the historic buildings because that's really where my passion is. But I just want to say that the new building, I think, is very well designed. It gives uh, a flavor of the historic district, but it's still a very modern building. And, uh, you know, we don't want to replicate history, so we don't want it to be exactly, but it was very good at reflecting the historic districts. And that's my last comment. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Walter and uh, Nakima. We, we have you in mind. Um, with that being said, uh, are, are there any more comments before we close this uh, for roll call? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we have to have a confirmation from the commissioners that um, um, the motion on the floor is to conditionally approve this um, uh, design review application, um, if they want to include the comments of the design review uh, committee. Um, someone needs to say that's included on what you're voting on. If, if someone wants to include all of them um, and adopt a, a conditional approval accordingly, then it needs to be stated before the roll call is taken. Thank you. Confirmed. Uh, with that being said, uh, is there anyone who wants to motion on the design uh, review, review uh, committee's Mr. report? Corvo. Mr. Corvo. I'll make a motion to um, include all the conditions that we discussed. Okay. Okay, you don't need to make a motion. You just need to state that you uh, think the resolution should include um, the committee's report, all the conditions listed in the committee's report. Okay, I move that. There's already, there's already a motion on the floor, so you don't need to move it. Just recommend that it's included. I recommend that all the conditions be included in in the um, motion. I'd like to add the conditions that were added after the uh, committee report, uh, such as um, you know, some kind of signage for historic things and the other stuff that we discussed since then. All right, Extor uh, exterior lighting and so forth. Do we have any other... Is anyone, is anyone unclear about the, um, the conditions that you're voting on? Just go ahead and say so. If everyone's clear, then you can go ahead with a roll call if you'd like, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's no hands raised. I think we're clear. We uh, 
uh, in addition to the committee report, we're adding a few conditions that were mission, mentioned during this open period. And I'll get those over to the secretary after this meeting to be included in the revised report. Otherwise, um, I think we are, are clear. Can, uh, can we get a roll call? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner DeLise. Commissioner Commissioner Corvo? Yes. Commissioner Redmond? Yes. Commissioner Rafael? Yes. Commissioner Walter? Yes. Chair Tate? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you again, and I'll see you at the next meeting. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Commissioner Redmond. You All too, Brian right. Kima. Bye. Bye. Uh, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, thank you for your time, and uh, our executive director will be in touch with you shortly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right, so at this point, we'll move forward to uh, uh, item four on our agenda, which is the administrative matters, and uh, executive director, you can go through uh, A, B, and C. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So. As with our uh, past meetings, um, I just would like to give a quick update on item A, 4A, our COVID-19 state of emergency protocol. Uh, everyone knows uh, that our COVID-19 uh, pandemic continues to um, uh, escalate and that it continues to be a major emergency oh. public health concern. Oh. Therefore, the city of Patterson and the state of New Jersey oh. Um, have put in place certain mandates that uh, help to protect um, the public from exposure and spreading this, uh, this virus. Uh, consequently, um, our city offices are um, uh, are, are open. Um, everyone is uh, working. Um, most uh, most people are working uh, in their offices, present um, and at their workstations. Uh, on site, however, our appointments with the public are by appointment, by appointment only. So there is very limited walk-in uh, service available. We encourage anyone who is um, looking to do business with the commission to continue to call uh, and write and ask for appointments, and we'll set something up and meet with you in person or on site. So our work will, you know, continue that as it has. Uh, just that all safety uh, precautions are being taken. Uh, with regard to the recommendations of our um, the various um, uh, government protocols that are that are in place, um, I would like to turn over item four B to Secretary Henderson uh, to give us a brief update on um, uh, as we usually do on our violations processing. Thank you, Director. Uh, to update the commission. Most recently, our goal has been to focus our violations on uh, small areas of the city to to bring uh, a block or a series of buildings into compliance and then move on to another section. Presently, we've issued a series of violations to properties that are surrounding the Lucastello Memorial Park, Slabby, the junction of Ellison Street, Prospect Street, and Chauncey Street. We have a number of violations pending against properties in that area. I would also like to add that the zone, the inspection side of the planning and zoning department has had reduced staff lately due to COVID and other uh, personnel issues. So the uh, inspection process is delayed. Uh, in the downtown commercial district, we continue to have a number of violations pending, but those have, adv have advanced to court summonses and John Franco and I are not uh, necessarily updated on the backlog of the municipal court, but we know that there is a time delay. I will continue to keep the commission updated on those violations for signage as they are heard by the municipal court. That concludes my report. Thank you, Tim. Uh, as for uh, moving down to item 4C, special election for vice chairperson, uh, I'd like to ask our attorney, Ben David Zeldman, to um, please tell us about the special election results. Thank you. 
Uh, fortunately, the normal thing happened. We got votes. We got enough for a quorum. So, congratulations, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Kelly! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Congratulations, Mr. Congrats, Charlie. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to the executive director and the secretary for covering administrative matters. Um, I guess we move along to committee reports. Item number five. Well, there, there are no reports under item number five, so can we go to number six? Confirmed. Thank you very much. We're going to move to old business and correspondence, which is item number six. We'll start with uh, A and B. Um, Executive Director, can you go through these items, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to start with item 6A, pending municipal historic landmark designations for an update. Um, and your packet was distributed a couple of uh, pieces of correspondence uh, on both item one and two the uh, Church of Holy Communion and uh, 468 Totowa Avenue, Mishmel on Totowa Avenue. I'm um, kind of looking for bringing up my um, my documents. Just give me a moment. Here we go. Meeting. Um, give me materials. Here we go. And uh, let's open this one. Okay, so this was distributed. We did uh, receive uh, a formality from um, the diocese, uh, uh, who was the owner of the Episcopal Diocese in Newark, the owner of Holy, Com Holy Communion. And uh, just as promised, as was reported in the last meeting in November when we voted on an extension, uh, for this designation, first readings, or actually for this meeting, uh, the extension was was due. Uh, they predicted that the sale would be completed by the end of the year, meaning the end of this, you know, December, month of December. And in fact, it was. And this uh, letter confirms that um, on December twenty second, the, the the sale was consummated, as we had been waiting for. Uh, for you know, for about uh, nine months of the majority of the year. So I would like to um, uh, note that they're grateful for the consideration that the commission extended with regard to the situation. And <clears throat> I also would like to um, uh, say that we distributed a, a letter to you uh, where we've reached out to the new uh, pastor and leadership of the congregation that uh, has purchased the church building and will begin to use it for worship. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting the new pastor and um, hopefully in the next month. Uh, so at the next HPC meeting, I may have an additional report as to uh, moving along with um, our, um, uh, our contact with the new owners. Uh, the other piece of correspondence that uh, was uh, submitted uh, distributed to you was <clears throat> a memo that was directed to uh, the the planning board requesting that our uh, designation uh, be scheduled for a hearing at the board. Um, and uh, this was transmitted, and this is all the memorialization of what everyone heard at, at, the meet, at our meeting. Um, uh, where you know, the, this building had been considered previously, and um, it was um, laid on the table, and then um, you know, we're sort of passed a resolution to bring it back uh, forward for consideration, and this was the purpose of the um, of the letter. So it has been submitted. I understand that the planning board is extremely backed up right now. Um, there, well, first of all, there is a lot of business, uh, and, and there is a lot of new business, but there's also a backlog due to COVID. So um, I'll continue to, to monitor this, and hope, hopefully we can get a, a hearing set up uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but I'll continue to monitor this and keep you informed um, about uh, our progress with getting in front of the planning board on this. Uh, 
Um, next item under old business number 6B, I'd like to provide a report on a couple of projects that um, uh, are starting and finishing uh, in the Great Falls, <clears throat> the Great Falls National Historical Park area. Uh, if you recall, I've been giving you updates about the ATP uh, perimeter site uh, fence, uh, ATP site perimeter uh, fence that um, is being installed by the EPA. Um, I was uh, with them monitoring as the archaeologist uh, on the job, and uh, this project has been <clears throat> largely completed at this point. Um, I wanted to show you, however, the most uh, with that said, the most um, prominent sort of uh, view of the uh, fence line project is the corner um, of Van Houten and Mill Street at the main bridge entrance, and everyone is familiar with uh, these crummy conditions that exist here with the temporary fence and this gate that was always hanging by a thread and so on. Now, this was all slated to be replaced as part of the, uh, uh, the EPA's project. However, due to um, the, uh, the discovery of, of the natural gas leak in the street. So you can see, maybe you can see on the photo that there's a gas mark out or mark outs here in the right of way uh, where there's significant electrical and gas utilities right nearby the, the area where uh, we had slated to uh, place the boring for the post holes in this area. As soon as one of the post holes uh, was breaking ground, the strong smell of gas sort of came out of the, came out of the soil and the work was stopped. So um, we've had to rethink this area um, with regard to you know, how to install the fence uh, in this area and the gate. And as you can see in this portion of the photo, we're just trying to blow it up a bit so it's a little easier to see. Uh, on the right edge of frame, you'll see the bollards uh, behind the fence. These bollards are all installed on top of the uh, concrete, cast concrete coping on the raceway wall. And the same condition exists on the other side of the bridge between the bridge and the uh, Essex Mill. So um, we have permission from the SHPO to actually uh, plate uh, mount, like surface mount, the fence and the, and the gate to the cast concrete coping of the uh, lower raceway wall. So this is the area that will be finished. The EPA plans to remobilize in mid-February when the materials arrive to finish this part of the installation. And this, again, will be the most public uh, portion of the, of the project, but it's the only portion that, you know, cannot be completed due to the discovery of the gas leak. However, with this photo, you'll see that the fence on the second bridge has been uh, repaired. These are the gate, existing gates have been repaired and uh, refurbished. There's a number of feet of existing fence line that have been repaired um, and not actually, you know, there was no need to really replace it. Replace it. Uh, I'm trying to just show you a couple more uh, photos of the area. This is the area where it was repaired. Um, there's just a couple more here to show you that although the the main um, bridge situation that I described to you needs to be taken care of in February, uh, there is an internal gate that uh, has been uh, repaired as well that uh, is blocking the uh, access to the site right now. Also, here you can see that. So in this photo, once it finishes loading, this is uh, sort of, you can see the other side of the main bridge, and there's a new fence installation all along here and uh, on the back raceway wall, or, you know, well, not on the wall, but just behind it. And here's the, there was an existing gate that's been installed. So there'll be a gate in the back and a gate in the front when, when this project is completed. Uh, right now, the middle raceway along McBride Avenue, where there's a, um, a bridge that crosses over the middle raceway, is also has a, um, a fence installed to block access to the uh, ATP site from the middle raceway approach. Um, so going back to uh, the the agenda. Okay, we're we're still on uh, Great Falls. Uh, Great Falls. The other um, 
the other Great Falls Historic District project under number two that I'd like to point out uh, uh, is the Lucasell Memorial Park project. If you recall, we did do a design review for that park. It's been bid out and it's been awarded and we had our uh, pre-construction uh, meeting. So this project will be uh, in construction and underway uh, most likely in the next couple of weeks, we're waiting for a major permit to come through uh, for the Soil Conservation District before the work can actually start. Uh, there's already made significant headway in uh, sketching out the uh, interpretive panels that we discussed during the design review. Um, that's a major part of the project that the HPC is involved in that's also um, well underway. I already covered item number two, the site fence installation. And uh, finally, I wanted to mention that um, uh, request for proposals for architectural services on the Patterson uh, or the, the uh, Patterson Distance State Park site and on the Quarry Lawn um, site in the, uh, uh, on the National Park side. Those proposals will be going, um, we're getting an advertising date uh, probably in February, so the design will start to happen um, once the uh, the proposals come back and we can award a contract a couple of months from now. Uh, so again, we anticipate getting into design, uh, especially in the spring and summer, um, and these designs will be brought to the commission, of course, when they're in their format for, for doing so. Um, we also I want to talk about the uh, Eastside Park Historic District. There's uh, the new construction building that um, we approved in our uh, last meeting. Wanted to report to you that there's been um, an ongoing um, internal review that was mandated by the design review conditions for uh, approval of windows and doors, and we've just about gotten uh, a window approved, and we've got a door in works. Uh, and this project is moving along. Um, we also have started to kick off the Lambert Castle uh, overall rehabilitation project, um, and that has not uh, gone into full-blown construction yet, but it definitely is mobilizing uh, the first uh, site security fencing and first meetings have been held. Uh, we're very excited about um, helping the county with this project as much as we can and watching it unfold over um, the next uh, the next uh, 10 or 12 months, I believe, uh, or, or maybe even longer, frankly. I, I don't remember what the construction schedule is, but I know that uh, Kelly mentioned it when the presentation was made. Um, also very exciting to announce to you that the um, Danforth uh, Memorial Library has received a major uh, matching grant from the State Library uh, Construction Bond uh, uh, program. Uh, the reward was about $750,000 to match the city's $750,000 for approximately a one point, approximately a $1.5 million project. Uh, the project will entail both exterior and interior um, elements. Uh, some of these will include a rehab of the, of the um, of the uh, accessibility to the uh, elevator and the elevator platforms. Uh, some uh, also possibly bathrooms accessibility. Uh, the total rehab of the um, children's uh, area and the facilities there, including the washrooms there, and also the much needed uh, roof replacement, roof repairs, cornice work, uh, and other exterior work that are sort of above the window line to uh, prevent further water infiltration into this very important building. So this is also going out for um, a request for promotion of proposals uh, process to establish a uh, architect who will work with us on the um, on establishing the, uh, the, the drawings needed to, to bid out. Uh, so these are very exciting projects, all of them that are uh, uh, just starting to hatch. It's going to be a very busy year for design. And then, of course, we'll get right into construction of all of these projects as quickly as possible when following the design process. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my uh, director's reports under old business. Thank you, Executive Director. These are very exciting updates, and I'm happy that we're on board as this is all uh, taking place and manifesting in Patterson. 
Uh, with that being said, I uh, will move. We will move to the public portion of our meeting. Um, and we make a motion to open the public portion. Rich. All right. Moved. All right. So Tim, did you get that? We have uh, executive uh, executive commission commissioner Walter with the motion, and then we have second by uh, commissioner or, or vice chair Ravel. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, can we get a roll call? <laughs> Commissioner Delise. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Corvo. Yes. Commissioner Rafael. Yes. Commissioner Walter. Yes. Commissioner Tate. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. So, Tim, could you provide the, the number, the call in number, and we'll give them three minutes to call in. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Those who would like to participate in the public portion may call in at 973-321-1579 and enter meeting ID 711-680-001. To repeat, those who would like to participate in the public portion may call in at 973-321-1579 and enter meeting ID 711-680-001. Thank you, Timothy. So right now it's 9.40 p.m. We'll give the public till 9.43 to call in. Thank you very much.
Secretary, it is not now 9.43 p.m. Um, Executive Director, can you confirm with IT if there are any uh, people from the public who uh, want to call in? Mr. Chairman, the IT has confirmed that there are no callers. Thank you. Uh, can we get a motion to close the public portion in a second? Motion to close. I second, okay. Rich. Okay, so uh, uh, Tim, we have uh, Commissioner Corbo with the motion, and then the second is from Commissioner Walter. Did you uh, capture that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Can we have a roll call to close? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner DeLise? Yes. yes. Commissioner Corbo? Yes. Commissioner Raffel? Yes. Commissioner Walter? Yes. Chair Tate? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. I call this, this meeting adjourned at 9.44 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Second. And did you capture that? Yes, I did. Roll call, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes. Commissioner DeLise? Yes. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Corbo? Yes. Commissioner Raffel? Yes. Commissioner Walter? Yes. Chair Tate? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, this evening uh, for the everyone. meeting. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Executive. Thank you, Secretary. I appreciate it. Thank you, Will. Good night, Thank you. everybody. You too. Good night, everybody. Good hey, night. I got my, I, I got my first COVID vaccine shot. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, thanks. You'll be the first. Oh, thank you. I'm sure. <laughs> So long. Yeah, then I can go to the last meetings by myself. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Joyce. Good night. Good night, Sonia. Good night. Good night.